What is up, everybody? Welcome to The Feast, episode 57, the show where you submit replays and we cast them. I am Deltius, and joining me tonight, we've got Gabe and E. What's going on, man? Yeah, nothing much. How's it going, man? Hey. Yeah. Can't complain. Just excited to cast some more games tonight. So we got a couple announcements for us, uh, for you guys, rather, I should say, here. Talk to me about the Tooth & Tail PvP campaign, man. That's coming up this weekend. Yes. Okay. It is nearing the final steps of completion, as in maps are being finalized and tested for, you know, any quirks. I believe there was a couple found earlier today that were sorted out, so... That's all pretty good. Lore is, well, story, it's not like really lore, is being worked on as well. That's my department. My job is basically done, so now I'm kind of just moderating and I'm going to be casting it with you on Sunday. Oop. Um, yeah, it's good. Yeah, other than that, the PvP campaign, it's on Sunday. <sighs> and it should be ready by, I'm guessing, Saturday. Well, yeah. it has to be on Saturday. Well, it's, it's Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Saturday, we're doing like this, uh, just a regular standard best of three tournament. If you guys haven't signed up, man, definitely join. It's just for fun. Don't worry about if you're not like a super top level player or anything, man. There's the information underneath the stream here. Uh, so we're going to basically be doing a best of three tournament on Saturday, starting at 11 a.m. PST and 2 p.m. EST uh, for our American players and whatever that translates to for europe let me see uh 8 p.m cest uh for europe there and uh and yeah me and jed erickson are gonna cast just a standard run-of-the-mill best of 30 uh tournament on saturday and the top four players of that are gonna qualify and represent factions for the pvp campaign on sunday at the same time so that's really cool and i didn't catch uh massive self stream the other day where he's talking about all the pocket wor uh pocket world stuff man so uh talk a little bit uh to us about that all right well there's in my opinion there's two aspects to the, what pocket world is right now there's the gameplay aspect which is you know obviously dominated by people like valeris the gentleman all of that you know, all of them and then there's the other aspect which is the mind game aspect which this kind of what Master Self has released allows for that to be expanded. For example, there's the POG system, or whatever he called it, which is essentially a little thing you can put on the map by the commander that allows you to focus your efforts on this one area. So say, you know, Jet's the commander of the KSR right now, even though we all know I am, and he places it on, say, Snickery. Anything around Snickery will be, you know, owned by a faction. Let's say we beat the common folk. If there's on the map we you know we push our efforts in that area we don't it's no longer random to say the least that's pretty cool there's also yeah there's also militarized sugar strikes which are used to immediately neutralize locations there is um capitals factions have a capital i believe like a essentially super powered territory that goes down fighting it's got like 15 or something points of defense and it's very hard to kill but the factions can't expand outwards unless they win a certain number of games with that capital i think that's how that works right sweet man yeah i'm, I'm looking forward to it uh i had a lot of fun with the previous version of it just kind of keeping that up on the other monitor you know while i'm playing rank games and stuff and uh Speaking of high-level players, guys, if you're in the Tooth & Tail Season 2 League, do not forget to try to finish your matches up by tomorrow night, I believe, is the deadline. I've got one more match i got to do against Chip I'm not looking forward to, but other than that, I've completed my matches. I've done okay, so I'm not, not too disappointed. But anyways, man, I know people get antsy if I talk forever, so are you ready to get into match number one here? I am. Let's do it. Three, two, one, go. Okay, spawning in the bottom, we've got Vincent. And spawning in the top, we have Yaris. All right. Yaris already won my heart using uh, Tasha. Yep, we see the fox here. Vincent's going for this heavy tier one, tier two style, so I imagine he's going to want to try to end this in the early to mid game. You might try to do something like a squirrel pigeon mole push out, uh, maybe sprinkle in a little bit of lizards. I actually like a lot. Uh, when players just build like six or nine lizards as this little strike force, you know, you can run around the map and try to grab campfires and stuff like that, you know? Right, yeah. But it's also really cool when you do have lizards in your deck where you can do that big tech switch and just, you know, kind of YOLO and, and, and tra trade everything out for just like 40 lizards and, and, and try, yeah. to, try to win a base race or something like that. But 
Yaris here already coming out with a bit of aggression, it looks like, with a pretty early Warren. I'm thinking that that's more of a safety Warren. Like, um, I, for example, Chip's build order, or it was like five farm Warren just to be safe from early aggression. Yeah, yeah, certainly. I mean, that's, that's definitely true. It doesn't necessarily... Uh, mean aggression, but if you're gonna go, I feel like this map's kind of large for it. But I th I like the benefit when you go for like a five farm or six farm more to just kind of move across the map and try to poke. Like you never know if you have good target fire, you might pick up a a squirrel or two. You don't have to overcommit or anything. Right. This map might be too big Very for that. Yeah, the map itself is. I'm definitely gonna say it's in the favor of Yaris. Vincent, he has one pocket mill, and then other than that, he has to go very out of his way to get to the other mill that's in his area. Right. Oh, and by the way, thanks, uh, ACD Broken Wing, for the follow, and Miss Glicker for the uh, the raid. I appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, Vincent's got a nice little pocket base in the back, and he's going uh, up. He's doing a pretty standard opening, you know, two tier one Warrens into a tier two. Going to go for the snakes, and uh, snakes can be good with some good micro, man. You get in there, you tag single tier, tier one units, and... You know, that's Discount all it takes. Kasha. Yep, yep, essentially. Oh. And this third base for Vincent is? is not terrible. Uh-oh. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And you know what? Yaris is a good spawn for this, I feel like. Uh, he's, he's up on the high ground. He's in a corner. He's only got one entrance to his base. Nice scout, though, from Vincent, so he knows what's going to come his way. And with this new patch here, he does also know it's a fox, so he can start to prepare for that. He can start building lizards to counter. Yeah, I think Lizards are definitely the right choice uh, to deal with the Fox, at least with what Vincent's got in his deck, but Vincent's just going to macro up for now, uh, you know, take a couple more farms that's, on his expansion. That's very risky. Yeah, he's still got fox some time. Rack up money. Right. Yes, that's true. That Warren still has quite a bit of time, actually. Wow, it's almost done. You're right, like, he needs to start building Lizards soon, um, if, if that's his strategy to try to deal with it. Uh, maybe he thinks the snakes will be enough, which they can be, uh, but you know what? It looks like Vincent's going to go for a timing attack and and maybe, oh, nope, changes his mind and, and moves back. But that might have been a good good answer to this, you know? I, I still think he yeah. might do it. Like, just try to move in right before that fox is done when your opponent's invested 360 food into it and, you know, it doesn't have anything to show for it. Losing that commander is going to hey. slow things down, though. Mm-hmm. Ooh, let's see if he's gonna get it out in time. He need, he's already committed to this. Like he's built the moles, so the fox is halfway done. So that's he's on a clock essentially. He doesn't have lizards, at least not yet. They're still building, and frankly, Iaris's army is probably gonna be able to hold with the skunks. Yeah, it's gonna if depend the if the if the snakes can get some good tags on those skunks and how the gas is. This is some pretty good gas clouds though. Nice tags on those skunks, but yeah, the gas clouds do a pretty decent job. But Vincent's still got enough to get in here. The at fox least is up. at least trade armies. But yeah, now the fox is up, so this is Commander gonna be too much. Yeah, the Arse is gonna push this back. He doesn't lose any farms, and he's ahead in the army value, but he's below in income, and that's due to Vincent actually having an established second base. Oh man, does Vincent want to go for a base race here? He's trying to sneak can around he? the fox. Yeah, go He's gonna pick yeah, this crystal up. He knows that though, so yeah, he won't do all that much. Yeah, I think that's the right move from from Yaris too. Like not committing in, you know. He, I, I think he's got enough to defend his base, especially with this water man. Like that's gonna be really difficult for Vincent to attack into. Unless Yoris decides to attack into it, as he is right now. Oh, the fox gets tagged twice. Uh, I think she's dead. Ooh, barely lives. Oh, thank God. Okay. 3 HP, though. It, all Vincent needs is another snake tag or just a couple of hits from some squirrels, and that fox will go down. Right. Also, I must answer Blitz. This sniper unit is called a fox. Ooh, trying to get the targeting. He's got it, though. The Kasha will yeah, die. Too. Yeah, and um, my heart's broken. Yaris cleans that attack up pretty well. Uh, his yeah. army was still enough. Uh, Fenson might have committed too hard, like focus, focus firing down on on the fox. Now he does kill the fox, which is absolutely huge. So now Fenson kind of re the fox back. Over, so he's obviously intent on rebuilding it. Yeah, he's gonna need a better bank. Uh, Yaris needs to just kind of hang back, 
maybe build a couple more farms and then perhaps save up for another fox or i you know what if i was really trying to prioritize getting out another fox here i would just sell off a couple squirrel warrens and then rebuild them i would agree with that however well no because vincent's economy isn't enough to actually sustain and oh i don't have the skins active so that's what he meant yeah yeah the skins skins are only on my side of things so you, you the don't... only skin I have active is Division Master QM or Commander QM, so I'm vanilla. All right, I'm we're sure. gonna stabilize a little bit in this game. Yaris, Yaris is just hanging back. Gonna get up another fox, maybe try to take up some more farms on that second base. And, and meanwhile, Vincent is kind of in this weird position because we're getting into this late game scenario, and he doesn't have too many of those big, you know, late game units to throw out. No he tier, no tier. He trees. doesn't have Falcons even. Yeah, I mean, so he's in a. I don't want to say he's in a poor position, but he's definitely in a worse position than Yaris is. Well, his army composition is good for what he's fighting. Like the lizards kind of beat squirrels, skunks, and fox, right? So, it makes sense. But trying to attack through this water, man, it, it's definitely difficult. He could get right. a ferret out and try to abuse this high ground where his lizards cur currently are, and just kind of poke in. Uh, but he's this gonna try it with rough. the with the lizards. This is gonna work for him. I. Don't... I don't, I don't understand the the choice of movements from the Yaris there. Going yeah, he, towards the left as if he was going to attack the base. Yeah, he got blindsided a little bit there, but uh, luckily for Yaris, Vincent tried to focus down the Gristmill. Didn't quite get it. You know, I mean, Vincent could have right. instead targeted down pigs, got more damage on it, maybe got out of there with some lizards. But I think he could have actually killed the mill had he not pulled away. He would have lost all the lizards, but he would have at least gotten the mill. Yeah, that and if he was, like, targeting the mill from the get-go, too. Yeah, exactly. He had enough lizards. All right, now here we're going to get into a base trade that Vincent has finally decided, I can't deal with Yaris's army. I'm just going to come in and swing and counterattack. Yeah. Let's see who's going to win I, this. I have a feeling this is going to become one of those situations where they both destroy one another's everything, and then they're just left with nothing. Right. And we basically just swap sides of the map. Dude, those are, those are the coolest Vincent. games to see, man. I love it. Yeah, because Vincent has so many things all around the map. Mills, campfire, and they're both taking things as they go, obviously. Yaris pulled his rally back a little too fast, though. He didn't quite get that grist mill in the south, but it wouldn't have been enough to knock Vincent out anyways, so right. not the biggest deal. Not starving to death. Yeah, oh yeah, that's a good point. Like, he needs to get back here and sell stuff off before Vincent just takes that out, you know, and then he can't sell anything. Exactly. And now, ERS is essentially restricted to this one base. The other one has no potential for farms on. This is going to be tough, man. Like, on paper, Yaris's army is good, but if Vincent can kind of catch the fox out of position with these lizards or, you know, get a couple tags on with the snakes, he might come back here. Like Yaris is not yeah, home to defend. Each, each, this is one of those, this is one of those games where every unit that dies, it's just all the more important. Oh yeah. Where are the squirrels? They were in the south taking out yeah. that grist mill. Oh man, I think oh, if Vincent would have, so uh, I think if Vincent would have targeted down uh, the fox, like he was targeting those skunks first. He might have been able I to think get the it. Skunks are more dangerous to the lizards than the foxes because they can spread around the damage. The fox can only attack one at a time. Yeah, it's true. But the fox is one of these units that, like, if it's alive in scrappy situations like this, I mean, it can get really out of hand really fast. That is true. So Vincent's basically down to nothing. He's gonna try to knock y Yaris out of this game, but I think Yaris is. I, I feel like Yaris might win, but he's got, he's starving out. He's got to build a campfire. Or, uh, I'm sorry, Yaris a farm. Is, he can just go... He's not going to do it, though. At least not yet. He needs to burrow back. Does what is he, he doing? Does he not realize he's starving? I don't... Oh, my God. So. I don't think he knows he's starving or something he, like that. Oh, man, Yaris. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. Like, he could have burrowed back. This hurts. Oh, dude. It's always beautiful. Wrong. Press X to doubt. All right. Let's keep things moving. What's up? Mm -hmm. 
No, I was saying I, I just remember I, I didn't realize it until before this, but my long coats are pink and my KSR is blue. <laughs> <laughs> Chip was doing that. He had a custom skin that made like Bellify red and, and Hopper blue or something like that. I mean, you can change the colors of the factions themselves just going into the files and then putting a color code. Right. So makes sense. Like, yeah. That's what I did. It's really easy to, to modify this game, man. I think that's I love it. Is by design on Andy's part. But all right, guys, you, let's get into it. Game number two. Are you ready, Gabening? I am. Let's do it. Three, two, one, go. All right. Spawning on the left, we've got Miss Glicker. And on the right, we have the red dinosaur. This pleases me. I just see a fox in place of QM. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you linked me that skin earlier. Uh, did, you, did you make that, or who made that one? No, Vlad Lad made that for me because he is one of my loyal KSR soldiers. Nice. Yeah, Blitzrider asking about the free-for-all. I think guys are asking about the free-for-all last time, too. Um, uh, I can prepare a free-for-all. Might need to check my replay full. I remember seeing somebody submitted a free for all, but I don't remember what the name of it was. Um, I think it was actually me. I you? think I have that replay. <laughs> right on. Well, if we're doing good on time, or if we still got some juice uh, later on, we might squeeze it in. All right. I'm not opposed, I'm not opposed to that because there was a. Uh, was that a pretty good one? Uh, that was a good replay. God, Jed Erickson's free for all tournament was just completely absurd. Wait, a free for all tournament? Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't hear that. Yeah, it was a few months ago, man. I uh, I actually didn't cast that one. I participated, but I got knocked out in like the first round. Uh, hmm. I want. I, we should, okay. We need to do something like that again. Cause that I, sounds I that's like the heart of tooth and tail to me. I I don't know about that, man. <laughs> I don't know, cause like like in terms of the actual design of the game, it just seems fitting that the story should be four factions trying to kill one another. Not, oh, these two factions are yeah, you know, that, fighting one another. It's four. That it's makes four sense. For a reason. Right. That does make sense. And plus, I like chaos, so, you know. Yeah. Premium Bo says no. I say yes. Premium Bo just wants more 2v2 tournaments. It's been a while since we had a 2v2 tournament. I think the last one, it might have been Josh's training ground, I think. What if we did both? Think about it. Hmm. Hmm. Have, like, a 2v2 tournament and then the top four teams all elect one person and they do a four four way free for all I like that. for the I like that a lot. for the very final but here we go man red, red dino is is moving out with some squirrel toe gonna try to bust miss flicker who's going for a falcon he's got some toads himself though um falcon is up so that's a huge advantage yeah, yeah plus all this high ground yeah, yeah miss Glicker uh defends that very nicely red dino is forced to go back for now and he's gonna tech into some ferrets. Red Dino really needs some high ground vision here. Like trying to attack onto that that double high ground, you know, that that's just very good defensive terrain for Licker. Yeah. Though looking well, no, he has that one pocket mill that is com no, not completely inaccessible. There's one tile that he can get through. Right. I think Premium Bow is abusing abusing his moderator status. I request that it's removed. Oh, in your in your Discord? No, not in mine. In your Twitch. Oh. Though I'm pretty sure he's probably doing it in the Discord too, because he apparently dislikes foxes. So I think you should remove him as a moderator. <laughs> Dude, Premium Bo is the number one moder moderator, man. He just we just like him because he provides two VTs. I like him because he's amazing. He's the number one mod, man. Number one mod in a. Mm-hmm. And my only mod, but still. He's the best. <laughs> oh, Andrew. Hey, man. Hold on a second. <laughs> I've got I've got other people that are moderators on paper. Like, I think Ch uh, Chip is, Mishi is, a couple other guys. But Premium Bo, man, he's dedicated. He's here. He's here every day, bright and early, in the chat, making sure nobody. Every day? Or every, single, every single day. Even when I'm not streaming, he's in there really? just, just oh. making sure nobody's uh, talking too much smack or anything. Wow. <laughs> well, I guess I'll have to talk smack about you in my KSR Discord then. Oh, boy. All right, all right. Red Dino. Now, I've seen this a lot out of players, man. They'll take an expansion and put up a balloon. Um, I think I first saw it by Sky Raider, but it's gotten really popular. Chip uses it a lot, and it's a pretty good play because 
breaking a balloon can be very, very difficult if it's well defended. And it's one of those units that, yeah, it's not going to kill things super, super fast. But even before the battle even starts, it, it picks off a couple tier one units, you know? And it also is just like, it annoys commanders and it annoys players. Yeah, it's really hard to scout. Thing, like, yeah, you see, I know a lot of people that they see like Kasha or, you know, like they see it, well, specifically Kasha actually. And they, it's like a bull seeing red. They just decide, oh, I'm going to charge and kill the fox because it's annoying. Right. Balloons are kind of similar. Like, I know I do that. I see a fox. I'm like, oh, I'm going to take these lizards into your giant army just to kill the fox because it's annoying. So we've got some pretty good mid-game armies here. Red Dino is a bit ahead on his economy, but Miss Clicker is, uh, you know, got his tier three Warren relatively faster. Uh, as you can see, the Badger's got about 20 seconds left on it, and Red Dino's Tier 3 Warren uh, has got about 20 seconds till it's even completed, uh, and, and the Wolf starts production. So, Miss Clicker could hit some kind of timing attack, but if he waits too long, you know, the Wolf gets out for Red Dino, then Red Dino is going to be in a great spot. He's had this economic lead. He's going to have a similar power level to his army. Uh, and, uh, yeah, this is, it's going to be a very difficult situation. If he doesn't attack within that small window, I feel like things are just going to fall apart. Yeah, let's see if he moves out with this badger right now, if, he, if he's going to wait. He adds another farm. I'm, I'm never against that. All right, let's see if Miss Clicker pulls the trigger. It's always hard to attack yep. into the balloon, but it looks like he might be gearing out to move. No, it looks like he changed Hell his no. mind. This is probably going to get ugly. So by the time Miss Clicker actually attacks, Red Dino's wolf will be out, and, and Red Dino should be in a favorable position since he's got that second base economy going so much earlier now miss clicker is not slouching on his second base keep that in mind you know it is up and running so if it, it it's kind of weird because it's like that that window kind of opened and shut for liquor right so now red dino is going to have a window where it's like hey we both have tier three but i've got a better eco but if, if he waits too long then liquor's economy is going to catch up and it's going to kind of stabilize again exactly right it's a very balanced situation right now although red dinosaur isn't pouring into economy as much as he's pouring into more falcons which i respect that play wolf buff falcons are scary yeah i i like that from red dino he's, he's got a nice economy already he's even going to use this wolf to buff it up a bit more uh before he moves out but taking a third base is going to be difficult for either player on this map you can see miss clicker already trying to get down there and claim a gristmill but it might be easy for red yeah. dino to take although that, that is out a that's a, kind of one of those gristmills that a lot of people don't see. Yeah, that's true. Because it's like on the high ground, and it's the only thing on the high ground. Well, plus, in these situations, you, like, you want to be really careful and not move your commander out of position. Because what if he's out scouting, and then the big engagement comes in, you know? Exactly. And, fun fact, the dinosaur doesn't even know that no exists. All right, let's see who gets the better toad engagements. The toads are actually dull and void in this fight. There's enough firepower from both armies to kind of mow them down before any of them connect. And Licker looks like he, he takes uh, round one there. He definitely has a better economy as of right now. However, Red Dinosaur's army value is actually higher. Yep. Now, that, keep in mind that army value is including the 240 balloons, food yeah. and the balloons. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, still, still I, I feel like we're pretty even. I think Licker got the better trade there, but not by, like, a critical amount, you know. Right. It wasn't a, a, a resounding success. It was yeah. just a victory. Yep. Just a nice little engagement for him, and he, and he pulled back too. He didn't want to commit. It's rough, man. Like th these balloons can almost like paralyze you. You know, like you really yeah. don't want to take the engagement underneath it. The, the best time to attack would almost be like right now, you, where you see Red Dino's army is a bit out of position. You can get in there, snipe that balloon down before it has any cover. Man, he's doing that. Yeah, that's a perfect uh, opportunity for Liquor to come in and let's At least see. Not those toads blow up on the farms. And here comes the engagement. This is going to be brutal. This fight's coming ahead for a dinosaur, definitely. Oh, yeah, that wolf buff is so huge, man, especially on units like falcons and ferrets and chameleons. Like, it really jacks up your tier two. Exactly. And Licker just got mowed down, man. Like, he couldn't keep his badger on the front line to do enough damage. And... I think he could still hold this if he plays the badger right. He has pigeons, he has a falcon. Yeah, keep in mind, too, that Licker's got the better economy here. Indeed, because he has the other mill worker. Oh, the Either badger goes down. Man. That's probably going to be it. Uh, you know, Red Dino knocking out yeah. most of Licker's army, but his saving grace was he was keeping that badger alive. 
Uh, now that it falls, probably too much damage here. A KSR loss sounds more like common folk propaganda. <laughs> Are you out of here, man? Is that too much for you? <laughs> I, I, I think Miss Licker is actually just a member of the common folk trying to sabotage us. This is unacceptable. All right. Well, it was nice casting with you. I'm going to go uh, remove her motion. <laughs> All right, let me take a sip of my beverage here. I should probably go get one of my own, but should I? Delicious. All right, man. Delicious beverage. Let's keep uh, let's keep things moving. You ready for game number three? I am. Let's get into it. Three, two, one, go. All right, spawning in the bottom, we've got Amistria. And spawning in the top, we have Shelf. You know, I think we should do that again because you did the KSR and I did the Common Folk, and I feel dirty <laughs> right now. Yeah, we did kind of swap sides on, uh, I, I on our chosen factions. Should, you know, I think that's the way this should go. It's not all oh, top and bottom. No, 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 no. If it's Common Folk, you do it. <laughs> I, can't, I can't bear this burden. All right, all right. I'll keep that in mind for the next games. Hey, Protocam with the 50 bits, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So. Dingo says I need more volume. Uh, okay. Let me see if I can fix that. Why don't you talk about the game for a second? All right. Right now, this map is definitely in the favor of Shelf, as in Amistria has to go very far out of her way to get a gristmill in general. And the other ones are kind of almost out of her reach, to say the least. They're way too close to Shelf's territory. And although she does have lizards, it, it won't really do much because these mills are just so close. Yeah. Hey, I, I, I turned up Gabe, and he let me know if that's better or if he's overpowering me or anything. Looking at the... Uh, yeah. It looks like we should be pretty level, though. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, you're definitely right. Amishira, you know, kind of my rule of thumb uh, with the RNG maps in Tooth & Tail is, like, as long as you're giving an accessible second base, you know, you really can't cry, you know, you can't QQ too much. But this is definitely right. rough for Amishira here. Now, she gets this Constellation Campfire, uh, which is nice. So, you know, if you're Amishira, your strategy... You kind of can go one or two ways. It's either A, let, let's grab that campfire, let's get that early game boost and try to end the game early, or B, she's really got to spread out on the map and, and you know, try to maybe grab this uh, 9 o'clock position, you know, and, and use those lizards for the map control. Right. Hmm. I'm, I'm questioning this MG by shelf. It's a weird one. I think it makes me wonder if he's going to go for, like, a wolf or something. Yeah, I, I think that's, you know, this is a nice spawn for him to rush a tier 3, but just a, a tip for beginners, like, um, a pretty standard tier 3 rush build would be going, like, 8 farm, 2 tier 1, into the tier 3, and then you could throw down turrets after that, but you want to kind of prioritize throwing down that tier 3 before the turret, because the turrets get built so quickly, um, but it doesn't look like that here, I think he might just be wanting to play safe, and yeah, now he's going to go for the wolf, oh, no, nope, Falcons. Huh, I think I'm a second behind, okay, I should fix it. Valerius with the cheers, man. I appreciate it. Another common folk buddy in the chat. And speaking of Russian uh, wolf here, Amishria is the one to go for that. I love this plan from Amishria. You know, get that wolf nice out, too. get the lizards buffed up, or maybe even falcons eventually. Try to control the map. Um, seems pretty solid. Valerius has arrived. The mob boss of the common folk is here. <laughs> I love that. Just like the names I came up with. They are not friends, they are food. <laughs> All right, so that's a really nice scout for Shelf there. He's going to identify the, the quick tier three coming out of Amishira. Love it. Amishira taking some plays out of the gentleman's book, man, and uh, selling that Hex off right after, it's, right after it's uh, scouted. And look at how many lizards she's built, building. This is, this is what I've been doing. It's like, oh, you fool. You've fallen for my trap card. Now you will suffer the wrath of 33 lizards. Yeah. It's a I good, love this one. It's definitely a good play here. I, I, I think this is the move to make, because this is going to catch Shelf pretty off guard. Like, this force is just going to get he ran to over. Run. Yeah, that is that is a crippling defeat. And see, that wasn't a bad play from Shelf, because Shelf was like, okay, she's rushing a tier 3. I'm going to go hit her while she's vulnerable, right? But, ah, surprise. Exactly. You know, here's a bunch of lizards That was a good face. play on Amistria's part. But, yeah. is she going to get... Yeah, she's going to get stuff out of this I would have prior yeah, there we go. Prioritizing the farms. Glory to the KSR. This pleases me greatly. 
Yep, get some decent damage done there, and she she pulls out before overextending, so I like to see that a lot. And now she can just back up. She's got that farm over to the 9 o'clock, so she can stabilize over there. But from Shelf's perspective, you know, he's not down and out of this. He's got the second base up and running. He's got an economic lead. And as long as he can Yeah, exactly. Of... It's... Although she is going for these, you know, cheeky lizard moves of, oh, I'm going to snipe your stuff. This can, this can get ugly, though. Well, here come the lizard reinforcements, the horde. Nice defense from Shelf here. And as long as Shelf just kind of hunkers down, you know, doesn't move out on the map, maybe waits for the wolf, waits for a healthy economy on two base, you know, he can still win this game. Yeah, exactly. Although if Amistria, at this point, I'd wait for, you know, maximum lizards and then just heavily econ up and build more. The more lizards you have, the faster you're going to kill those falcons. Right. I feel like Shelf just, like, really needs a wolf, man. Like, he can't afford it right now. But that's what's going to kind of equalize. Win in the game. Yeah, it's going to, like, equalize that the power is... levels of this, these armies. Because at the moment, he cannot fight a mystery in an open field, you know? I don't think the wolf would really help, though. Because the thing with that is... The lizards will just kill the wolf. They'll dive right in. They'll kill the wolf. They'll kill the falcons. And at that point, there's nothing left. Yeah, it might the come squirrels... down to a bit of micro there. You got to be careful. I mean, don't underestimate buffed up squirrels, man. They can uh, mow down those lizards pretty quick. But nice play from Amicia jumping in on top yeah. of everything. Yeah. Although with the warrens there, that does allow for some tanking. I would have focused on the falcon myself. However, that's still a victory. Glory to the KSR. So at this point, you can't tell I'm very biased. <laughs> I feel like Shelf has like a decent amount of warrens, but I feel like Amicia probably has too many warrens for her economy. She she probably needs to sell off a few of these. I wouldn't doubt if she does that. All right, she really needs to target down that falcon, trying to clear things on the ground first though. And now that falcon is vulnerable, but oh man, that hero falcon! Yeah, but the next wave comes in. That's just gonna clean up everything. Bit of an this is such a scrappy game you now. Yeah, this is where it's going to get weird, man. Because both players have, like, traded so often. Neither one really has a lot to show for it. And nobody's got a good economy. I think the right thing on Amistria here is exactly what she just did there. Just sell a couple warrens so that you can get as many lizards as possible and go in. Your opponent does not have as good of an economy or a potential economy as you do. Yeah, that was really smart. Another thing to do would probably just be throw in another farm. Yeah. Yeah, you got to kind of trickle in the farms. You don't want to go super crazy with the farms so you can get caught off guard. And, you know, she just throws down a couple likewise for Shelf. But Shelf also sold off that uh, that Falcon War, and I think that was a pretty good play on his part because you know, he just yeah. really can't afford it at this point. Yeah, at this point, it's just a Tier 1 game. Ten squirrels versus or lizards versus eight squirrels and two pigeons. I think I give that to the lizards. It yeah, it depends on defender's advantage. Like, Shelf can't move out of his base, but if Amishiro jumps in, he might have a decent chance uh, defending. She, she needs to be careful here. Let's see if she can get some damage done. Gets a pig. That's absolutely huge. Does she get the other one? It's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that puts... Shelf's army... Not Shelf, though. Shelf's very ahead in terms of army value. However, economy-wise, he is tanked. Yeah, that, that, that looked like, at first glance, it might have been a bad move by Amishria, but I actually liked it a lot. Like, she sacked her army, but now she has a resounding economic lead. I mean, putting exactly. Shelf down to one pig is, is huge. Exactly. He's he's going to be forced to sell either the Pigeon Warren or one of the Squirrel Warrens just to get another farm going. Yeah. And Amishria, she can build up more lizards. I would be astonished if Shelf can come back from this. Of course, I don't want that because he's filthy common folk, but still. Hey, man, when there's a will, there's a way. You never know. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it, it's rough for Shelf because he can't really sell anything at this point. You know, Otherwise, Amishir is just going to have too much. If I want to be really critical, I'd, I'd probably say dump the, the pigeons at this point. Like, pigeons aren't really good in these kinds of numbers. You know, they're nice to sprinkle in when you've got, like, a big army, you know, because they're, like, a yeah. utility unit. But at this point, man, you just need as many guns as you can get. <laughs> Whole game won by lizards, 200 IQ. <laughs> I love the chat. Chat, chat is a great thing. Yeah, the chat's and 
That is yeah. be- that's a beautiful play from Amicia. Catches Shelf a bit out of position there. Just runs in, kills the pig, and backs out. Like she doesn't have to do anything else. Now Shelf's starving. Dingo has pointed out that one of us is Common Folk and one of us is KSR. We all know who what is the superior faction. I wonder. I wonder which one of us is the Common Folk. Maybe maybe the commander that has a custom Tooth and Tail TV skin, perhaps. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, I have a custom Fox skin for oh, Quartermaster. Oh what? So. <laughs> I wish I was watching that more closely. Like, how did Shelf win that fight? I I have no idea, but it's not going to do all that much good. Yeah. It was just like for style points at the end. Maybe he target fired really well. But, Maybe. Uh, really all cool I can game. say is glory to the KSR. Are you back, man? After a KSR win? Are you not leaving uh, exactly. anymore? <laughs> no, I'm not leaving anymore. I feel, I feel renewed. All right, man. The long folk shall. The long folk are shall. <laughs> what is this? We gotta think of like a name that combines all four factions. Long folk is pretty good. Civil, civil long folker. Like I, I, I'm imagining like a commied out bellified with one arm. You know, the long folk. He's like, he's, yeah. he's like wearing the same uniform, but it's all like raggy and stuff because he's poor. Yes. Exactly. Somebody Either needs that, to make that or fan art, man. The Russian uh, cap or whatever that thing is. Yeah. Comrade Hopper. Dude, Hopper's always the I, civil. Hopper's always, she's kind of reminded me of like being French. I don't know if it's like her accent. I don't know. French, really? Yeah. I like, don't, what would you classify her accent is or is as? I know? mean, I know it's all like Eastern European, but I've always kind of envisioned the common folk as a French, because the French in that time frame were like very, very socialist, like revolution. I mean, the people overthrew the government, and you know, Napoleon's army was basically a common folk army, and, and all that kind of stuff. So, but anyways, that is guys, true. Uh, game number four here. Are you ready to hop into it, Gabney? I am. Let's do it. Three, two. One go. All right. Do you want to do the blue or me or green uh, or me? Uh, I'll, I'll let you do the KSR. So in the bottom yeah. we've got the gentleman. And on the left we have Doggo. Oh, I feel I feel better now. See, aren't you torn in this game though? Because gentleman's got Kasha, but he's a, a stinky, uh, stinky long coat. Actually, long coats are my second favorite faction. However, that matters not. For you see, my QM skin is actually a fox as well. There you go. So it balances out. I think I like. Premium says poor person accent. <laughs> poor person. <laughs> I mean, oh he's not God. entirely wrong. That's a redneck accent, Mayan. Mine friend. So, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I like I like the Bellified's music the best. I think, to be honest. The, the what? Say that again. You cut out. I said I like Bellified's music the best. I think. Really? Yeah. I think my favorite factions when it comes to music, I like KSR, Longcoat, Civilized, Common Folk. And I think that's because the Common Folk instruments, they give me this, uh, I don't know, they like hurt my head because they're so loud. <laughs> right. I like the Common Folk's music a lot too, just because it's so like dramatic, you know? It's got yeah, like, exactly. these, these big moments. I, yeah. I listen to the soundtrack while I like, you know, for inspiration or whatever, not even on To The Tale related things, just some things in general oh yeah and it, it's it's very it, it works very well <laughs> okay so what's uh, going there's a reason hmm? go, go ahead no i was saying there's a reason this game soundtrack is grammy nominated or whatever oh yeah whatever it, it, whatever it, it was. it's super super fantastic it, you know little things like that can really add a lot of polish to a game man exactly um so you, you know it's I, I forget who pointed it out to me i think it was chip the other day but look at the the there's actually reflections in the water and that's all code Really? Yeah, like watch when the the commanders or any unit like goes over water. Apparently, that's just like code uh, that makes that happen. Oh yeah, that you're actually right. I remember seeing that earlier, and yeah. it does. I think uh, I don't think it works with the fox skin. I think it still shows QM, but still. Yeah, I'm that's sure. actually really cool. I remember seeing Kasha through a reflection. Now that you say it, mm-hmm. where is the swine music? It's called uh, the food or who becomes the meat. Okay, so uh, gentleman's going for this, uh, you know, pretty meta opening. He's got Squizzard. He's throwing down that balloon to kind of cover his campfire to kind of defend. I love this balloon placement from the gentleman a lot. It's on this high ground, so it's going to be a pain in the ass for Doggo, and it's going to defend not only his, his main base but this campfire. 
and his second base when he decides to take it as well. Doggo's going to move out with some uh, ferret harassment and makes a lot of sense, but I don't think Doggo can break this position for the moment. I think that balloon's really going to slow him down. Yeah. As of right now, the, the map is definitely in the favor of the gentleman if he can hold this position. However, Doggo found a little avenue in which he can kind of deal damage to the campfire itself. Wow, I'm really surprised now, Doggo got those ferrets out. I thought they were going to die for sure. Nice little counterattack from the gentleman. Now he starts picking up. He kills a skunk. He kills a ferret. He's got... He smells blood in the water, man. Takes out a couple warrants as well. And maybe from here, Doggo defends and pushes him back. I don't know. I think it's best for Doggo to actually just play back. I mean, I already know who wins because this is Tooth and Tail TV. So, you know, a gentleman wins are illegal here, but still. <laughs> All right, all right, gentlemen, moving in, man. Squizzard is a nice combination. Uh, He's walking through the gas, however, so the squirrels are kind of choking. Yeah, but they're kind of gladly sacrificed. The gentleman was able to get in there and take out some more of those crucial tier two units. I mean, those two tier two units are really the backbone of Doggo's army. If those things die, then the gentleman's definitely going to win in this tier one war. Yeah. However, at the same time, he's kind of bleeding food because his army at this point is relatively small reduced to low numbers of tier one and it's just not enough to get rid of these ferrets yeah but it's okay for the gentleman because he's got these two campfires going now the, the one campfire gets taken down but man you cannot underestimate i mean look at that income graph man i mean campfires will win or lose games all the time you know especially if it's really scrappy Doggo takes uh, the second base, and he's going to just keep trying to poke in with these ferrets. He's doing a good job with this harassment here, uh, but he needs to be careful, man. Gentleman keeps catching him out uh, when he steps just a little too far forward. What's Gentleman doing? Sneaky Gentleman uh, going to take a secret base on the map rather than the obvious one, and that kind of makes sense because that's in pretty comfortable firing range of those ferrets, you know? Yeah. Uh-oh. Gentleman, up to no good over yeah, here. I like this. Although attacking into Warrens with the lizards is very risky. Looks like he actually targeted down those Warrens just to kind of get them out of the way. Uh, right. But overall, well, at this point, he's going to lose one. Yeah. I think that that fight goes very well in the favor of Doggo. Yeah, nice hold there. And now Doggo is going to start taking an economic advantage uh, since he's got that second base up. We're going to have to see how much uh, Gentleman decides to commit to his little secret base up at the top of so far no farms that that's a really important thing which has happened here man dog uh, gentleman just went over to see how much doggo has committed on his second base so that kind of lets gentleman gauge how many farms yeah. he can safely build right i've been doing that a lot more recently i actually got that pointer from the gentleman uh we we're doing not pre not me and him but he was kind of like spectating my rounds against someone else and he was giving us pointers or whatever I was actually from the Pocket World event because, you know, Minecraft and KSR are kind of working together. And, um, yeah, he was just kind of giving us pointers and he pointed out to keep track of the enemy's farm, which is something oh, yeah. I didn't really do well. Yeah, scouting so, is yeah, so important in this game, man. Uh, you know, Honestly. I, I oftentimes find, like, when I get on a little bit of a losing streak uh, and I, I start kind of self-analyzing, you know, nine times out of ten, it's just because I've been lazy with my scouting, you know, because I'm kind of right, like, yeah. I've got this build order in my head that I'm going to do, and, and I'm just kind of playing my game. I'm not really, you know, playing tooth and tail at that point. Yeah. I think a lot of times people can get, like, distracted. Like, I'm kind of, like, another thing I notice about myself, I'm a perfectionist when it comes to war in placement. I'm like, okay. If these two Warrens aren't perfectly aligned, I'm going to sell them and rebuild them, which is the terrible thing to do because it puts me behind, but I can't stop myself from yeah. doing it. Yeah, later on, it doesn't matter so much, but those, like, first couple Warrens, I mean, if you, like, yeah. if you sell one off to reposition it and then it just so happens your opponent, you know, is getting aggressive and attacks in, I mean, exactly. you can definitely, definitely lose not the game. Fun. Gentleman's doing the uh, I'm gonna build lizards and kill you in a base race stack tactic. Yeah, and I think it's smart. I mean, he hasn't seen anything from Doggo that that really counters the lizards, um, and uh, and turns out Doggo really doesn't have much in his deck to do so. And it's also gonna discourage Doggo from getting up to that tier three. I mean, lizards in general do well against most tier three, you know, maybe Borer excluded. 
Uh, right. And maybe Owl. I don't know. I don't know what the verdict would be in that matchup. But I, I feel like against Badger, against Fox, against Wolf, uh, Lizards, you know, get up on those units really quickly and knock them out. That is very true. I know from very close personal experience that Lizards are the bane of Fox's existence. Oh, yeah. I've lost many a Fox to those dreadful things. So nice scouting okay. on... Uh, each of their opponents second bases here both players are aware of the economic state of their opponents and it looks like the gentleman's kind of you know pulling a, a mulligan here like he, he's setting up shop in the top right and i think he's just waiting on doggo to move in and attack gentleman's main base and then from there just you know backstab him right go for the base race oh uh, doggo's taking the mill close to his main to gentleman's main base so this could work both ways and with Doggo knowing about that up there, should the gentleman decide to get greedy and go after that base, he can kind of do a wraparound. Yeah, that was a really smart scout from Doggo. Like, Doggo didn't fall for it. You know, he went into yeah. Gentleman's Main, he realized, hey, there's nothing here. And instead of just moving out and attacking, you know, he, he scouted the top again and, and saw that whole uh, pack of lizards just waiting for the counterattack. Fox is on the way here, and so is the Badger. Now, Fox beats Badger, so if these two get out, especially, well, Badger's coming out earlier, so. This can go either way. I'm I'm putting it in the favor of the gentleman, however, just because I feel like lizards are so strong against, you know, tier skunks specifically, and Badger as well. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's going to come down to the micro and the positioning and stuff. I mean, there are, there are instances, I, I would say overall, the Fox beats the Badger. Uh, but it's not like a hard rule. I mean, if, if the if the engagement gets really prolonged, you know, and that badger can can just be wound up, just mowing down everything on the opponent's army, then the fox might not be enough. You know what I mean? Right. It just, if the fox can get a good shot in, however, yeah. on an already damaged badger, then you know, that's kind of game for the badger. Yeah, and that's definitely easier said than done because you can't. The hard thing about the fox is like you can't target fire and uh, keep it alive at the same time. You know, if you, yeah. if you move your commander up to try to target the opponent's badger, then now all of a sudden your fox is vulnerable. So you kind of have to make that decision. But here we go. The fire seems to be going for. I personally, yeah, he's doing what I would do, which is to go up towards you know, the already farmed bases instead of taking the bait. The box is not up. Lizards are going in and getting mowed down. This is a fantastic push from Doggo here. As long as he no keeps the Badger alive. Oh, oh! oh I, it. I, I knew it. <laughs> that was the perfect this shot. Fox up, all these Doggo surrenders. Oh, man. Dude, somebody needs to make a gif of that. Just that, like split second when the badger was low the fox just comes out and target acquired see you later nerd <laughs> oh my wa motion they do <laughs> uh, that was another KSR loss I'm uh, contemplating suicide uh, while you do that let me grab another drink real quick I will be right back just a minute I would do the same actually Alright, I'm back. I think we're still waiting on Gabe, Gabe and E to grab his beverage, so thanks for tuning in, everybody. I, I really appreciate it, as usual. Um, super excited for the Tooth and Tail PvP campaign this weekend at 2 p.m. EST. It's going to be here on this I'm, channel. We'll have me and I'm Jed back. Erickson. I'm going to go grab a drink. What's up, Gabe and e? We're going to have me and Jed Erickson on Saturday with just a standard Tooth and Tail tournament. Uh, to determine who gets to play in the super fun PvP campaign on Sunday. Like, dude, this is really, this is going to be a lot of fun, man. I'm almost jealous mm -hmm. of the uh, the guys that get to play on Sunday because, I mean, I don't think we've ever done this type of thing before. I mean, totally custom maps and, uh, you know, little campaign type style events and stuff. It's pretty neat. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for it. I was, I was actually very excited when Jet asked me to make the story or whatever. That's just like a sign to be like, oh, hey, someone thinks my writing is good. Hey. <laughs> oh, well. All right, man. Match number five. Are you ready to do this? I am. Let's get into it. Three, two, one, go. Also, why does premium just want to make me sad? <gasps> okay, sorry. All right. Spotting at the top, we've got Big Pimpintosh 
And spawning in the left, we have Lego Man playing the glorious KSR. This pleases me. All right, we've got chameleons here from Tosh, and chameleons, I feel like, are a bit of a sleeper at the moment. You don't see them super, super often, but man, they, they wreck some nerds, especially with that extra regeneration they get now. Uh, I saw what Chip did to your fox earlier today. Yeah, that was, that was pretty mean. That was really good on his part because he hadn't even shown chameleons up until that yeah. point, so I had no reason to expect it. That was uh, that hurt me. It hurt me very deeply. Yeah. I still gotta play. Chip's the last guy I gotta play in my class S matches. I'm I'm worried, man. I think I could beat him, but it's gonna be rough. Like I take games off Chip every now and then, but he's definitely got like a 70% win rate against me or something. <laughs> <laughs> I I believe in you, man. Um. So nothing super crazy yet. We're gonna have to see what direction these guys want to take the game in. Um, you know, pretty standard decks. I, I don't think anything looks nuts there. We see the snakes, which are kind of coming back as well. Uh, snakes are kind of this good, you know, kind of the poor man's fox in the early to mid game. And then later on, they do a good job target firing down tier three units. Uh, so right. I think they're in a nice place. And I feel like snakes probably do pretty well against other tier two as well, you know. <laughs> snakes are, I feel like snakes kind of falter if it's like a go in style play from the enemy so for example if your enemy's building pure lizards yeah like you know just a lot of lizards snakes are kind of like in the same boat as ferrets you're not going to do good yeah they're kind of like the the uh opposite of the skunk right where the, yeah. the snake is going to fall short against an army that's going like pure tier one so Tosh, exactly tosh here has scouted that his opponent went for a very very fast mill and, and he responded by taking a couple campfires down south uh, let's see if he's gonna put on some aggression. He's got some lizards moving out, but there's plenty of squirrels here for the defense. Nice trade for Lego Man. Mm -hmm. The the army graph is actually. I mean, it doesn't really matter right now because each unit kind of just jumps it up by a bunch. But still, economy wise, obviously Tosh is in the lead right now. He could technically take that third campfire, but that might tip off Lego Man. Like, oh hey, there's something down here. Yeah, Logo Man hasn't scouted the, the campfires in the south, and even if he does, like, he really can't do anything about it because he can't move his squirrels down there and try to take them out, you know? Otherwise, these lizards would just pounce. Yeah, exactly. That's what they want. It's all common for propaganda. <laughs> so, we're just gearing up with a lot of Tier 1. At the moment, though, I, I like Logo Man's position. Like, he's got this balloon up. We see that more and more. You know, just a single balloon guarding that second base, and you always want to position it uh, to where it kind of guards, you know, multiple things at once. And, uh, yeah. Nice positioning from Lego Man there on that high ground, kind of guarding both bases at once. And uh, meanwhile, Tosh is just spreading out on the map, uh, which he's got the right to. He's got the map control. He's got the lizards. But he can't just kind of go straight in at the moment. But we see Tier 2 picks on the way. Yeah, I would have honestly gone for skunks over snakes right now. Yeah, it looked like he placed the snake and then sold it and then built the skunks and then decided... He couldn't decide, man. He just went for both. Yeah, exactly. But his, I like, just think that mass skunk would fare better than against the lizards. Although Tosh is going for the badger, so that's... And Lego Man's going for the wolf. Premium both talking about the five farm snake in the oh. chat. Don't talk... You're giving me flashbacks, dude. Ah, oh, Five Farm Snake. I remember when I first got into this game, I watched uh, Clash of Comrades where Chip pulled off Five Farm Snake. I'm like, I should try that. And that's the one win I have on pile. That's the <laughs> one win I have on pile was Five Farm Snake. That's hilarious. Love it. See, that's the type of thing I I'd, I'd like to see here. Like, Lego Man can't really position his whole army to move out and deal with these campfires, but just a snake, you know, just run down there, tag it, get out of there in time. Exactly. Tier 3 is on the way for both players. Tosh is going to have his badger on the board a bit before Lego Man's wolf is out, but not by too much. I still feel like, I think overall, wolf is stronger than badger just because it makes everything around it so much better. Dude, wolf has been very powerful lately. Uh, I would almost argue it might be top tier as far as tier I, 3 goes. I would say top tier is owl right now. And I know that's like, wait, what? But Owl is brutal with like the way that just things are shaping up to say the least. Yeah. You just build owls and you get to that point of critical mass that you cannot win the game. 
But you know it's better than owls. Owls with wolf buff. <laughs> exactly. There is, like, I actually, I, owls were really popular when the game started, and I, I've always been a fox player, uh, so fox obviously, you know, can not be in the greatest position against owl, but it depends on the map, but owl is really vulnerable to lots and lots of turrets. Like, you could yeah. just draw this turret line to make those mice basically negligible and then start harassing even, your opponent. Even then, though, if you have ten owls, yeah. oh, what's yeah. a wall of MGs going to do? Right, but... but that's a weird argument because it's like, well, if you got 10 owls, I mean, what if you had 10 badgers, you know? Like, by the time you get to, like, 10 of any tier 3, it's going to be just ridiculous. But owls especially. So oh, yeah, is, yeah, for easy. sure. It's 12 times 10. That's doing some quick maths, 110. <laughs> yeah, Wolf is, it, it's in an interesting spot. Like, we're seeing a lot of guys double up on the tier 3 with Wolf. You know, Wolf Owl, Wolf Badger. Um, Wolf Fox. Wolf Box is a bit silly. Uh, Print F, uh, Grandmaster StarCraft II player who used to play the game, kind of really stylized this build. I think it was something along the line of like Squirrel Pigeon, Ferret, Wolf Box, uh, Turret. And he would just get up. That, that, that's like the dream deck. Dude, he would get up, a, you know, steroided ferrets and, and foxes, and it would just be absolutely insane. Man, look <laughs> at all these balloons coming down from Lego Man, though. And Tosh is going to deny that one. He doesn't really want lego man to be able to stretch out too far on the map as long as tosh can keep lego man contained to two bases he should eventually win this yeah but lego man's getting this you know third base down south and if he's able to secure that uh that's going to be huge for him so many balloons dude 12 times 10 is wait a second hold on a second I need to do the quick maths again. Did you just say 12 times 10 is 110? I think so. I'm. You broke on. the cardinal rule of streaming, man. Never do math on stream. Apparently, okay. I mean, I do it you from time to just... time, but I'm an engineer, so I can get away with it. I Where's my calculator? I need to... <laughs> Hold on. This is unacceptable. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Oh man, look at all these balloons. Balloons are one of these critical mass units too. Like, if you get up to just a stupid amount of balloons, there can be nothing you can do about it. But balloons are really vulnerable to tier one, especially without any units backing them out up. So, Tosh took some losses there, but you know, knocked down a couple balloons. I still feel like that's a victory. For... Well, no. Well, yeah. Ah, the wolf buff though, man. I don't think the skunk really gains a ton of value from the wolf buff. It just spreads out so much more gas. So against a large tier one army, that's pretty good. Yeah. Well, well, gas isn't stacked though, right? So. Oh, it's okay. It's 120. Yeah. Thank man. you. When you multiply yeah. it by 10, you just take the other number and add a zero to it. You know what I'm saying? I can't. Oh, wait a second. I'm yeah. retarded. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <sighs> Listen, I might be leaving my start, but it doesn't mean I'm smart. Badger number two is awesome. on the way for Tosh. Oh, wolf, no. Oh, oh he got God. the wolf. My God. That this, is, this brings me physical pain. That is a great pickup He's, for Tosh. The wolf is just building again, however, going in at this time is very risky to say the least. And no tags, oh, seven tags at once on the badger. That is a dead badger. Dude, he had eight snakes. I don't know if he had eight snakes on the board, but he's got a maximum supply of eight snakes, which is pretty ridiculous. Exactly. Matt Cicel says, I'm going to keep a super sharp ear for Delphius math now. You know, now I, I just got to quit while I'm ahead, man. I don't think I've made a math error on stream. You're more than welcome to go through all 57 episodes and find one. Uh, Listen, okay, hold on. I need to, I need to have a clip. Uh personal conversation with the gentleman the ksr we just want the war to end i don't care who rules so long as it's not the common folk i could care less if the long kids do the ruling all right glory to vyastatska yes i did that because we have a border thing on the server <laughs> like lego man's taking some good trades here but Tosh has just got way too what much of a that? powerhouse economy man and he's able to reproduce his army very very quickly and Lego Man's basically on his last last leg here, last Lego. Am I going to be forced to watch another KSR loss? This is this is why we lost the pocket world. This is unacceptable. Dude, 
Tosh is just killing it for the civilized man. I don't know if Tosh is like, uh, I don't know if he was in Paco World or if he's really hardcore dedicated to one faction or not. I haven't, I haven't played, paid close enough attention. I think he normally plays Archimedes. Oh yeah, he does. Also, it's Vyestatska, because the KSR Discord has a border, gentlemen. Also, that's game. There's no way that Lego Man's going to be able to hold this. Yeah, he's calling it. I don't know. Yeah, Lego Man really just couldn't get that third base established. Uh, losing mm -hmm. that wolf really hurt, too. Plus, and he didn't really have a direct fighting unit. He had squirrels, and other than that, everything else was kind of like... You basically had snakes and skunks, which are just the same thing that do different things. It's like, the snake does single target and the skunk spreads around the damage. That's, oh, that's, that's man. all it is. But as you're talking smack, Lego Man holds. And Wait a second. Totally How is this wiped work? Tosh's army. You were, you were talking about having an AoE unit and a single target unit like it was a bad thing, man. I, <laughs> but Lego Man got in there. It got it done, man, with the with the AoE damage, with the single fire you know, on the important units. I'm going to apologize for doubting. Glory to the KSR. I just still don't think it's going to be enough, though. I think Tosh is just going to win on, on income at this point, man. Not saying he didn't play well, but, like, look at that it income graph. matter, though. He got the style points. That's what matters here. Look at those pigs working. Indeed they are. I, I love just the animations in this game. Specifically, I love Volkov. Like, his voice, that's my favorite, like, voice in the game aside from QM. Ew. Good job. All right. It looks like both players are just kind of holding back. This is, the I feel like, a good idea for Lego Man at this point. Like, he needs to stabilize. He needs to get a bit of a better economy going. Uh, but this is really his last economic option. Like, this is it, man. Yeah. The map's basically mined out, and Tosh still has his other base here. Tosh is going to come in with a lot of lizards. He's just going to probably... I would have gone it for the wolf. However, he actually takes minimal losses there. Yeah, the armies are surprisingly equal in terms. Oh no, that's income, my bad. And apparently, Lego Man is ahead in terms of army value. Question yeah. mark? Yeah, the balloons, the warrens, and, and here we go. That's I, a rough choke for Tosh to try to come in through. Uh, lots of poison the wolf on that four. Oh, I just realized that the wolf buff snakes. He holds this. Dude, that, I'm telling you, man, Wolf is so strong at the moment. Like, nothing's really changed on the Wolf. Just people have been utilizing it better. And uh, He's know. actually making a counter push. No, he's going to pull back now, but still. He yep. needs that Wolf back. The Wolf buff snakes are what's winning him these fights. Yeah, he got 14 stacks of poison on that Badger so quickly. The poor Badger probably felt its heart stop and didn't die. Is Tosh going to tap out? Is Lego Man going to win this? I don't think so. I mean, I want to think so because he's playing the glorious KSR and I see my fox there, but still. The wolf yelled at the badger and it died. Exactly. That's how Volkov kills, right? He just yells very loudly. All right. Finally, without the wolf here, this might be too many lizards. I don't know. The snake is still... Oh. KSR taps out and Big Biffatosh takes the match. You know, it was nice. It was nice casting with you. I uh, I need to go contemplate things. Is that too much for you? It's too much. It's like three and three and five replays. Though this is a two v two sent by premium, so I know he's gonna be playing the KSR, which gives me joy. All right, man. Are you ready for match number six? I am prepared. Let's do it. Three, two, one, go. Ah. <sighs> Okay, spawning on the bottom, we've got Dingo Dancing and Kerpa. And spawning in the top, we have Premium Bow and James Bowring Alu. Premium and James have been doing this lately, man, the, the wolf uh, fox style. They tried doing it on me and Blackmore. I think I actually still have that replay. It was pretty, uh, it was the one time I'll ever work with a common folk. Pretty glorious. You, made it, you make it sound like you guys won the game. We did. Nice. What is Premium Boat up to? He's floating some money. It looks like he might be doing a mole rush here. They don't both have moles, so they, they're not terrible people, but Premium's being, like, scummy. Do it, he won't. Let's see. Three... Peace over morality. What are you doing, Wait. Premium? I'm so confused. No, that's... 
<laughs> I'll tell you what, the phrase peace of morality over morality has new meaning to me. Just like over the course of these past couple like days, it's gained so much more importance, I guess. Cause like, oh, balloons, you say, building a wall of them, peace over morality. <laughs> dude, I love that phrase. Dude, building a wall of balloons is definitely a pretty immoral thing to do. I'll give you that one. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just whatever, whatever attains peace of your shell. This is true. I don't understand what Premium's doing. I mean, it's obvious he's going to be building the wolf, but still. Well, he kind of had a botched early game attack. He was kind of debating. I think what happened was he wanted to come in and do a triple mole rush on Dingo, but Dingo has played a couple games against Premium and knows that he's known for his shenanigans. Built that Warren somewhat quickly. Premium saw that Warren and then kind of had to shift gears. Now, his, his partner James did go for the five farm double with some lizards, and he's been running around trying to find an angle for some, for some damage. He might get it down here on Kerpa. He will, actually. No, it looks Unless like... Kerpa spots it. Yeah, with... Kerpa spots it. No, Kerpa spots it. Oh, but is he going to get the deny on the Grispell? I don't think he's going to have enough time. No, he's going to actually lose value there. A lot of it. Ooh, four... Oh, three lizards go down. Nice pick up there from Kerpa. Yeah, Premium Bow rushing straight to that wolf. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see James throw down a fox shortly. Oh, no. It's, it's coming. I'll have to send you the replay of uh, me and Blackmore versus Premium and uh, James. Yeah, man. Pretty great. All right, so we got fast wolf fox here. Now, Dingo and Kerpa, man, as long as they can stay alive, they've scouted it. They see what's going on. They've got the the late game you know, hyper set up with the owls and balloons and, and falcons and such. So if they can just hold on uh, through this really strong mid game that, that blue and green are putting together, uh, they might have a, a pretty decent chance here. Now, another thing to note, too, is that Yellow and red are ahead on expansions. So if blue and green don't get something done here shortly or take some expansions themselves, that could be an issue. Yeah, and I, that can actually spiral into a lot when it comes to owl, because obviously a fox isn't going to do anything to an owl. Yeah. At least not much. So I don't really know. <laughs> yeah, foxes can get in there and hurt owls, but it, it's really rough to do so. Like, if they could actually get a few shots down. What just happened there? There's like a bunch of... I have of... no idea. Looks like a bunch of I'm stuff confused. Exploded. Yeah, I'm confused too. I wish I could rewind, man. I was totally rewind. I know, right? Did toads go off? Oh yeah, if you look at the uh, army graph, I'm pretty sure that that little drop is toads. Oh, maybe brought some toads over there with them and tried to get something That's done. Fine. That's what I'm thinking. Also, I love this play of using the wolf to buff the fox warren. I love that. I just love how versatile wolf as a unit is. Yeah. Yeah, you can do all kinds of things, man. It can buff your eco, can buff your production, buff your units. You can yell at turrets. Exactly. You can yell at other units to kill them. Pretty can you, great. Can you yell at landmines? I, I don't know. I mean, yelling at things obviously just makes them, you know, if it's an enemy, they die. If it's not an enemy, then they work harder. Also, they have balloons up, so they have the fox counter. And this Kasha is not going to be having a fun time. Yeah, looking for whatever she can get. Now, as a Fox player, I, I do think people get a little too scared from balloons. Like, you can still, if your opponent's got a balloon or two up, if you find a right angle, you can still get something done with your Kasha. You just got to be really careful about it. Yeah, you have to be cautious about it. Yeah. However, at the same time, it's not easy to be cautious because the smallest mistake and she dies. Yep. Like, you can run in there, you can soak the balloon hit with your commander, you know, pick something right. off and... Let, let the fox take, like, one balloon hit, you know, pick something else off, and then back out of there, you know? But it is a very... For one wrong move, and she's dead, and that's a lot more food that you lose than you gain. Yeah, it's a really articulate play to pull off. If you mess it up, then it's really bad. But you, you kind of have to. Like, you really can't just sit around with the fox, man. You got to be on the yeah. board. You got to be out there, you know, get some, getting stuff done just constantly. When when you build fox, your commander just becomes the fox. You don't go anywhere without Kasha, really. Ooh, if the fox, the fox is actually getting a couple shots off on the owl, gets three shots off on the owl, and takes it down. That's huge. Fox might die. No. Wolf buffed ferrets. That's terrifying. Dude, Wolf Buff Ferrets and Wolf Buff Fox, man. Mm -hmm. 
If I was uh, James right now, I would have gone to Red Space and killed the farms instead of starving. Also, that fox is sitting at five health. I, I would recommend doing exactly what's happening right now. Yeah, he's gonna pull it back for the time being, let it heal up for a second. So, yellow and red yeah. are taking some punches, but they've got a really healthy economy. And look at these wolf buff ferrets just raining hell down on Bingo Dancing's base. I don't know what Purple is thinking right now. He's got these two balloons sitting over here on the side of his second base that aren't doing anything. Yeah, maybe he just forgot about him or, or something like that, but he definitely needs all the food he can get at this point for sure. Yeah, it's kind of yeah, rough. Exactly. Like, that second base that he's got, it's really easy for, for the fox to get in there and poke it. Uh, right. That's really hindered Kerpa's economy, but Dingo Dancing is living large, man. He's got a fully saturated second base. He also has balloons to kind of protect it, as well as chameleons to try and catch the fox, even though it's not working. All right, so more mice coming in from Kerpa. Uh, not really going to be super, super effective yet. Now, these owls, man, one or two owls isn't the biggest deal in the world, but if Dingo and Kerpa can hold on and build up that owl count build to more. three, four, five, yeah, then it's going to be totally nuts. Dude, ten ferrets on the board for premium? That is so insane. <laughs> Look at this, just constant shells coming down. Ah, that, that's seeing, just... seeing a fox with a sniper rifle and a fox with a flag just gives me such joy. Yeah, that's gotta be a little Ow. confusing. It's really not. <laughs> so Kerpa is finally uh, since all this attention is kind of focused on this front up top, Kerpa's been able to sneak in some farms on that base down south. And now Kerpa's gearing up for a counterattack. This is a fantastic play, man. Uh, you know, come in here and, and kind of hit James Bowring in the soft underbelly and knock out that base. That's actually a very solid plan, and it's going to work out. Yeah, but... Although, if... look at how fast they're running. They made it from that blue base all the way down to this neutral run in under probably four seconds. Oh, does Kerpa get some poison stacks? He gets enough poison. That fox is going down. And Kerpa's going to win this engagement, perhaps. But the owl goes down to the falcon fire. But I think these snakes might be able to... Everything dies. Everything dies, Gavini. Well, it, it's, it's basically the last mission. Basically <laughs> the last mission. Everything's fine. But that was still a really good trade for Kerpa, because Kerpa took out James's, you know, all his economy, as well as trading armies with him. So he's got to be happy about that. I like how I just want to point out the army graph and how far ahead premium bow is. This is basically when you turn on cheats and just build nothing but army. That that's what the army graph normally looks like. Dude, ten ferrets and a wolf. Yellow and red are moving to totally out of position though. They they figured like, hey, this worked last time. Let's just yolo it down here, and now we're gonna get into a base race situation. Uh, where premium With wolf buff ferrets. That's the first time I've seen this. Yeah, he's probably gonna sniff out pretty quickly. Like, hey, nothing's here. Now they know it's up. Um, Although that balloon is doing work because the ferrets can't target it. Yeah, the squirrels are finally moving up to take that down. But yellow and red's army is just gonna annihilate everything from the back door on blue and green's base. But even still. Uh, I think Premium's in a pretty good spot because he's just got such a healthy army. Now, he, he's losing his warrens, so this army won't be rebuilt. Right, but he does have moles. Oh, man. He's basically gonna... Look at all these balloons. These balloons everybody was making fun of earlier, man. They're getting so much work in. James <laughs> is knocked out of the game completely. And Premium Bow is pretty close. They Everyone builds... Except for Dingo, or not Dingo, or James Bowring. The other two are starving. James is out, so it's Premium versus both of them. But Premium's and army. An owl it's so insane. Yeah, owls are a good unit to have against a whole bunch of ferrets, and these ferrets are going down. Alright. He manages to pull through, I swear. Okay, so... 
<laughs> all right. They're all getting out of starvation mode right now. What Actually, no, Kerpa's dead. Unless he can find a campfire. There's one over there, but no. Kerpa's out. No, poor Kerpa. For the people. And I believe. Be gone. <laughs> bye bye. Glory right. to the KSR. All right, so now we're going to have Dingo Dancing versus Premium Bow here. No economies left. A couple owls on Dingo's side with a few chameleons and premiums. Just got the scrappy army with a lot of defense and a wolf. But he does have moles, so therefore he wins. Look at this impenetrable fortress from Premium. <laughs> Ace finishing the line. Be gone. <laughs> I love that meme. All women are queens. If she breeds. All right, Dingo gonna move in. This is pretty good from Dingo. Like he just needs to use these mice over and over again. Like he's gonna pick off a turret here. I mean, that's perfect damage. Oh, is he gonna get that building farm? No, he actually gets a lot of turrets there, basically for free. And moves back to the last. That's minute. the thing is that he's getting all this free value, and every unit that Premium loses is just another, you know. Another nail in a potential coffin, essentially. Right. He doesn't have the economy, but he actually does. That's a lot of farms. So, Premium Bow is getting a good economy, but he doesn't have a whole lot left. He's got um, a few units, but really just a bunch of defense. So he needs to sell some of these turrets off. Now, turrets, though, are a good answer to owls. Like, yeah. I mean, it, it, it just really depends. <laughs> you kind of need this critical mass, you know? Otherwise, they're not going to trade well. Right. Although they are losing farms consistently. Yeah, yeah, these owls are getting damage done. Like, Premium almost needs to sell off these, like, flank turrets, you know, and, like, put them out front. Right. Although, at that point, they're vulnerable to the owls, especially with the new change to structures. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if he, if he like, moved his owls around. Like, he's got his flanks covered, but the front door is still a little bit open. He's kind of fixing that now, though, with the economy he has. I think his goal is just to starve out Dingo. Yeah, I don't even know what's going on anymore, man. Like, <laughs> this whoop is still here. That's really kind of the saving grace for premium, but a ferret's going to go down. And Dingo's going to back out. This is great play from Dingo, man. Like, just using these mice over and over. But he's got to get an economy going. I don't know if he can, really. He doesn't have anything to sell off, so he's working off of one farm to develop a bigger economy. Yeah, you just kind of, like, slowly and surely getting a better economy, you know? Like, oh, he has farms over here, I guess, so I missed that. I'm not blind. Yeah, he's got two on the board, a couple more on the way. Yeah, every so time this is sitting with a pretty age, and he's yeah. got four. Exactly. <laughs> Is Premium actually going to push out? Because the thing with that is, he can't kill the owls. They're just going to be constantly producing, uh, you know, free meat shields. And then there's the ferrets or, or chameleons. Yeah, I don't think he was expecting that, the chameleons. Oh, the wolf went down. That's huge. Though he does have 18 squirrels now, so that's something. Yeah, like, I think that was a good move out from Premium. He, he tried to... Uh, take advantage of when the owl's mice were, you know, expunged and he had to, you know, wait to build that back up. And I definitely think that's the right play against owls. Like, if those chameleons weren't there, which Premium Bow didn't calculate, uh, I did think that would have been a really good push for him. But now Premium Bow is down to the basics, man, but he's got a ton of money. Yeah, he does. He's just sitting on a ton of food. I would not be surprised if he just throws that into squirrels. Oh, that turret goes down. Look. Better yet. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is beautiful. DJ's, oh, he's selling the MGs just to make more. DJ Soak would be <laughs> proud, man. I was wondering why Premium was was piling up so much money, but he waits until the owls, you know, use their mice and then uses that as a trigger to to build a whole bunch of moles. Uh, but he kind of missed it. Can I just get the moles at one yelling Leroy Jenkins and Vishal? Right? That's all I want. <laughs> Here we go, man. So many moles. <laughs> this is 
is gonna be too much here. And there goes one of the owls. Yeah, that's good. All right, so Dingo's still got that's a curse pillar two up, but yeah, he's gonna tap out. Glory to the KSR. Dude, how many moles was that? Like 15 or 20? I think so. Okay, short little break, guys. Just like a minute or two, and we will be back. So don't get anywhere, and I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, what's up guys? We are back, or at least I am back. Gabby, are you there, man? I am. Sweet. All right, let us hop into the next Matarooski here. Game number seven, are you ready? I am. Let's do it. Three, two, one, go. Hey, gentlemen, out of here. Take care, man. Always good to see you. Dude, gentlemen's a madman. Any of my European viewers that like actually show up live, like you guys are the real MVP, dude. I think it's like three or four in the morning over there right now. Uh, but anyways, spawning in the bottom, we've got Swifty. And spawning in the top, we have Vlad Lad. Special thanks to Vlad Lad for the uh, uh, fox skin for me. He made that. So who are you yeah. going to root for here, man? I guess both players have fox, but KSR, obviously, right? So there you go. Yeah, KSR plus fox commander plus fox plus blue color. I don't know. I think I have to go for the civilized. No, I'm just kidding. Dude, I'm going for the civilized. I love Swifty, man. He's a cool guy. Um, wow. He's, he's given me a lot of a lot of tips, and uh, I think he's a really strong player. He, he did very well against Pyle in the uh, Grand Finals of Tooth and Tail Season League uh, League Season One, I should say. And, yeah. Uh, season Two. How's that going? I haven't really been keeping up with it. Uh, there's not a lot to keep up with at the moment. I'm not sure if Best Sakya NA has started broadcasting uh, replays. Right now, we're in kind of a round robin stage uh, where, oh, where everybody okay. just on their own time are playing their matches. So I've done most of my Class S matches. I still need to play against Chip and Mishi. So I got a couple of hard matches left. Every match is hard in Class S. Like, uh, but I've managed to win a few of them, so I'm happy about that. I, I might not get demoted after all. We'll have to see. Um, hey man, uh, you want to give me some pointers? <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad at this game. Dude, practice, watch your. Replays. I actually, yeah. actually, I don't do that. I, I, I like get distracted and I want to play instead of watch replays. That's a problem I have. Yeah. So I, mean, like, I could sit here and watch this replay of me losing. It, or... Tooth and Tail is really neat because it's like RTS distilled. I mean, I've been playing StarCraft for 20 years, right? And, and StarCraft is almost a game like tennis where, I mean, yeah, there is a lot of strategy, but it's it's mostly mechanics. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, if I'm way better than you at tennis, like, you're just never, ever going to win. Uh, where right. Tooth and Tail, since the mechanics have been really distilled, like, yeah, there's still micro and stuff. Um, but a lot of it comes down to, to strategy and, and scouting your opponent and responding correctly and kind of knowing what units to build and what situation and, and stuff like that. Overall, I feel like the game is pretty balanced at this point. I don't think there's any really like trash units or like auto include o OP units, you know? Yeah, I mean, squirrels seem pretty OP, you know. I think we shouldn't have squirrels. <laughs> they're, they're in every deck. 
it's kind, of a, it's kind of a problem. Yeah, it's squirrels and lizards are so broken, man. They're in, they're in every single deck, right? Honestly, it's like where where is my mole primary unit? Moles from ones when? All right, so so far in this game, um, Vlad Lad's been kind of hunkering down, creating a defensive position for himself, but. We see Swifty opening up with this kind of, you know, build a few tier one, get into the ferrets, add a balloon to, to guard against your, uh, you, I mean, to defend your second base. And once these ferrets come out, yeah, Vlad, I guess, already sniffed out the ferrets and maybe sold those turrets off uh, preemptively. But we're going to get into some ferret micro here. Looking at the map, the entire top half is just basically worthless. There's nothing up there. Yeah, especially that, around, like, 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock, you know, like, there's yeah, just nothing exactly. there. Other than that, it's just, like, the map is basically cut down, not even in the middle. The middle is where the battle is, because that's where Swifty is. So it's basically Swifty in the middle versus Vlad Lad on the far right. Ooh, this balloon gets up for Swifty, though. That's actually really huge. Now he gets that high ground vision, and that's just going to make this ferret harassment even that much more, uh... You know, damaging here, but four ferrets against two, I mean, definitely is a thing. Um, right. Dude, just hardcore ferret micro this game. I don't think anyone's lost a ferret yet, but they've gotten pretty close. These pigeons are helping Vlad Lad out. Um, Welcome to the ferret dance. Yeah, but more and more balloons coming up for Swifty, man, are, are gonna do very well against Vlad Lad's ferrets. I can't believe I'm saying this, but if I was Vlad Lad right now, I'd be putting down the box. Yeah, like that—that that was kind of gonna be my next question: is who's gonna be who's gonna be the first guy to throw down the fox? You gotta be careful about throwing down the fox in, in situations like this, though, because if you invest that 360 food into tier three, your opponent can just come in and, and crush you. You know? You mean like what's happening right now? <laughs> oh no, he's pulling back. Vladlud's running on very low tier one count. And yeah. Swifty's kind of doing the opposite. Yeah, he's, he's going for the just a ton and ton of ferrets, and he's got these falcons on the way too, uh, which are going to be very nice to try to zone back Swifty's uh, ferrets. But the falcons really kind of are, are choked out by the balloons at the same time. And once the fox hits the board, as Swifty's thrown his down, those those falcons are just going to be you know dead meat. Like Ooh, they're going to be a liability. A, a, a ferret does go down for Swifty. Yeah, and four ferrets versus one, and, you know, Swifty investing into this fox. Like, if Swifty can get away with it, that fox is going to be huge, but I don't know if he can defend. I, I think Vlad Lad gets the space from here. I don't know about that. I think he'll get a couple of the farms. I don't know about the entire base. Because the thing is, is that he just hit the all rally, so he's going to get the base now. So Swifty's second falls down, and, and Swifty realized that that was an inevitability, so he... he curves around, tries to get some counter-attack damage done, but he can't no, engage into Vlad Lad here. Like, I feel like Vlad Lad's got a stronger army. Once this box gets out, though, man, Swifty can just hold on. He should sell off one of those balloons and get that box production going. At the same time, though, that that did just give the Falcons so much more room. So in the current situation, that's, like, not up for, you know, that's not opportune, I guess. Now he sells off a little I don't know bit. About pigeons. I would say squirrels, because you need the squirrels to bring down the. Swifty starving. Yeah, man, he's kind of got the all his, all his uh, <laughs> eggs in this fox basket, dude. He's gonna sell off a couple things. He can sell off these balloons now, and this defense up here, as he's really got nothing to defend here anymore. But oh no, the fox uh, warren oh, is Vlad vulnerable. Vlad's going for this. He should take that mill. Now Shifty's gonna win the base race. Dude. What is going on in this game? So Vlad Lad's gonna come in, snipe that Grisville. Vlad Lad couldn't he didn't have the attack, like there's no ramp there uh, to get into right. the main. I was really worried for a second. I thought Vlad Lad was just going to walk up there and knock out that tier three. But swifty has got fantastic Fox Micro, man. Uh, Vlad Lad's in a fantastic position here. But now the Fox is out. Swifty might be able to make a miracle happen with it. I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, these, yeah, like all these Falcons in the air, like Falcons just get wrecked by Fox. Boom. There's and it's not like Vlad Lad really has something to sort of tank for them. Although, 
a lot of damage did get done to Kasha there. Yeah, fair. The pigeons are essentially the one option for tanking the shots, other than that one squirrel that was just sacrificed. Yeah, Ferris actually can be surprisingly good against Kasha in certain engagements, just if it like randomly gets the right hits, you know, it can just burst it right. down out of nowhere. But at the same time, it's obviously like telegraphed where the shots are going to land so you can dodge them. Yeah. Swifty doing what he can with this fox, but he's at a pretty big economic deficit at the moment. Uh, but he is still mining, and eventually, once he, as long as he, oh, that's what I'm talking about, though. Uh, the ferret shots well, I, come mean, in. I guess it doesn't hurt my heart too much because it, it was the KSR winning. So, glory to the KSR. So, by the way, the uh, <laughs> the replay you have of Blackmore, I really quick clicked on it just to see uh, which one it was because there were multiple. Right. It's the only one I did was. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Dude, oh, you're, you're spoiling, man. How dare no, you? No, no, no. I have a better one if you want. <laughs> no, man. That's the, that's the one that got submitted. You I, I, are evil. I, I wasn't even going to show it, and then you were like, no, no, show it. It was awesome. No, 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 no. That's yeah. the wrong one. That's no, the not no. awesome one. Hey, man. It's too late. It's number nine. You got, you, you got, <laughs> you I gotta, have, you know what, you, you better have extra energy tonight because I've got one for you, dude, consider it my submission. I don't know, man, <laughs> we, we, we only got a half hour left, still got a five more to muscle through, that 2v2 was super long, but it was a good one. Uh, uh long replace. <laughs> so let's see, let's hot, let's keep it going though, let's, let's get through, I want to at least get through the 12 that we got here, that's, that's the minimum, yeah. so, game number eight, man, are you ready? I am. Let's do it. Three, two, one, go. Oh, crap. All right. Double click, is it working? What is this? Okay, there we go. <laughs> spawning on the left, we've got Yawakim. And spawning on the right, we have Vincent. Yeah, Common Folk. All right, so you don't even care about this game, man. It's Common Folk versus Longcoats here. Nope. No no foxes. No, no nothing. So Yawakim's got a pretty interesting deck. Uh, the turret balloon is a nice strategy to be able to contain your opponent. Uh, it's a really good way to punish them if they are going to go for a fast tier 3. But meanwhile, Fence said, uh-oh, a little bit of mole shenanigans, but it looks to be just a just a fake out to try to keep Yoki keep on us. Yeah, I don't think Fence is going to do anything with it. Really, is just trying to scare Yaukim, force him out of this 8 farm opening. Um, but No, well, he's going to do something with it. I don't know if that's something will pay off, because that turret will be up. I don't think a mole wins that fight. Yeah, he backs out. He's going to get this mole out. Yeah, there's a bit of a mistake for Fincent, because now he's got to wait for that mole to, to heal all the way back up to full HP before he can sell it. But no harm, no foul, really. I mean, we're going to enter this early game in relatively even positions. So it's really on Fincent here. Like... Vincent doesn't want to sit around and just let Yaokim get huge, right? And look at this yeah. map, too. Like, it's almost kind of representative of these deck styles here. Like, Vincent, Vincent's deck says to me he wants to go for a big, like, one base play. And, and look at this. He's got a couple campfires to help him out with that. Uh, and meanwhile, Yaokim just wants to get huge, build a bunch of owls, get turrets and balloons uh, behind a bunch of bases. So... Obviously, this is... I will it, say that this game, I am going to be rooting for Yalkin because he is not playing common folk, so... Dude, Vincent's definitely the underdog on this base. Like, I tried to spin it positively there, but, like, I mean, this map is so favored for Yalkin. Like, every Gristmill's yeah. on his side of the map and the high ground to boot, uh, so... Vincent's definitely, yeah, has, definitely unfavored. He has every advantage right now. Yeah. So Yaokim's coming in for an attack, and let's see if Vincent's going to be able to hold it off. The commander goes down, though. That's absolutely huge. No micro on these ferrets. Numbers. I think, yeah, they're definitely going to take heavy losses on both sides. Had Yaokim's commander not died, I think that the losses sustained by Vincent would have been a lot worse. Yeah, I think Yaokim would probably have gotten maybe another Warren or a ferret there, or a falcon, or a farm. Jeez, one of those works. <laughs> No, Third, nothing, no, 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 no
Uh, but mm -hmm. one Warren was already killed for Meow Game. A second Warren goes down, and now he might actually get a ferret, too. Oh, nice micro from Finson, though. Gets it back in time. and The game of tier one chicken. Yep. Vincent is trying to stabilize, though. I mean, he's got the, the tech advantage at this point, and he's going to double down and get some snakes in there. Uh, and uh, he's going to push out soon, but these double balloons, man. Why does everybody build balloons? It makes me so sad as a fox player. <laughs> like, there's the, no fox this game. There was, there was a period where, like, nobody was building balloons, and then now it's, like, in everybody's deck. Yeah, I, 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 it's even in mine, and I am a firm ad advocate against balloons, but it's just so strong. Yeah, it's really powerful right now. I mean, I like Swifty style where he gets he gets the fox, turret, and balloon all in the same package there. Oh, common folk right. commander dies. That's actually enormous, and this could be pretty heavy losses for Finson here. Oh, he's gonna lose the ferrets as well. Ferrets? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's brutal. My ferret. Now Yao Kim's in a fantastic spot. Like, I feel like Vincent was doing well in the early game. That's always the worst feeling in the world, man. Like, that's, like, the only thing in this game that tilts me was when I'm doing, like, awesome, and then I lose my commander, and then everything just falls apart. Oh, it's the worst. It truly is the worst. I think it actually happened earlier today. I was against uh, Blackmore. I was very behind. And I catch his commander out, and I'm able to just roll into his base without any micro, and the skunks just gas everything. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah, man. It can be it can be rough for sure. So we're getting up to two bases here. Yao Kim is going for the owl. Uh, meanwhile, Vincent's just kind of getting more and more of these tier two units up. And, and overall, I mean, Yao Kim, I mean, it's really his game to lose at this point. He's in a great spot. Yeah. He's investing a ton into defense. You know, so he doesn't I, really... I don't know if I agree with this. I would have said at least sell those balloons and position them farther. I mean, it's it's. Yeah, I mean, three balloons. You're you're just never gonna break that. And but granted, Yao Kim doesn't have an army, right? Like he can't move yeah. out on the map, but he doesn't need to. Like he's just gotta chill. He's gotta macro up, and eventually he's gonna have a strong enough force uh, to just just right. roll over Vincent with these owls. Vincent's, however, is going into snakes, which, frankly, I don't think that's going to do that much against owls at all. Yeah, it's going to be rough. Like, the snake, if he can get some good target fire, nice little runaround attack from, from Vincent here, but it's not going to be enough. He doesn't get the balloon either, so that definitely feels bad, man. And, uh, but yeah, like, snake versus owl, it, it would be, like, if the snake can get some good target fire down on the owl, maybe, but. Right. He got one balloon, I think. Vincent with that attack. All right, so we're just kind of in the middle of a macro game that's gearing up. I might actually fast forward a little bit here, so let's go to times two for a second and kind of wait until a big engagement goes on. But yeah, I mean, Yao Kim's in a fantastic spot. I mean, he's got a lot of defense, so Vincent really can't attack in, and he's just building up that owl count, building up that economy. And eventually right. he's going to just be able to put fence in, in a, in a chokehold, you know, with these owls and just, just knock them out over time. Three of them adding a snake into the mix. Dude, up to three owls. So, all right, Fenton, we'll go back times one around seven minutes and almost 10 seconds. Now we're at seven ten, and Vincent is just poking in, uh, getting some damage done to some warrants here. Nice economy, though. Like, good job on Finson's part to actually get up on this high ground and claim something up here, you know? What time are you at right now? I'm at 7.32. All right, so Finson's moving in. I'm only at 42 because I somehow ended up 10 seconds ahead. All right, so the snake uh, actually did get some good target fire down the owl, but it barely lives at 8 HP. I guess not really barely, but it got pretty low. Um, right. The target fire almost worked there. Vincent moving in again, but all these balloons just doing so much damage to his army. I mean, this is not going to be a favorable trade. He's got to back out, and another victory there for Yao Kim. And I think from here, man, 
Like, Yao Kim can, yeah, he can just take a third base. He's got plenty of money to finance more and more owls. And once he gets up to, to maybe a third owl, he can just start moving out and harassing with these mice. And I don't think Vincent, you know, he's got no turrets. He's got nothing like that to soak these hits. And this could be, this could get pretty bad for him. So, yeah, he's tech switched over to lizards, man. He's going to try to get something done with that, but... Gonna trade inefficiently against these mites, though. Yeah, Yaokin might just have too much from here. The Finn should just lizard span. Says HD broke a week. Yeah, man, he called it, dude. He's trying to get into it, but these balloon positioning, it, it just might be too good. I might have, I think I lost Gabany here. All right, well, in the meantime, guys, I will keep doing this solo bolo. So, man, y'all keep getting up to five owls. And yeah, it's just, it's rough, man. It's it's really difficult to fight owls when you don't have any defensive structures. I mean, just look at these, like these couple mice over here. They're just gonna get so much damage done and wreck the main base of Vincent. And meanwhile, over on the side, the main mice force is gonna knock out the expansion as well. And this might just be too much damage for Vincent here. Oh, oh wait. Hang on, I might be able to get might be able to get Gabe any back in. Let me try calling him again. Alright, anyways. Yao Kim should have this. Like, I'm gonna fast forward a bit. Poor Vincent wanted to get that campfire, but his commander goes down. Or no, he, he actually warped back, but loses the little lizards that he has. And he's got to know the writings on the wall at this point, man. He's got no economy. He's got no army. And he taps out. Okay. Oh, just in time. Oh. Okay, one second, guys. Looks like Discord acted up on us. I apologize. Looks like Gabe and he might be trying to reset or something. Let me give him a call. But I've only got a few minutes left on the show, uh, so I want to keep things going, man. Uh, I apologize. We, we lost Gabe and he there. But speaking of Gabe and he, we've got a game with a minute. Match number nine. Let's keep things going, man. Let's get into it. Okay, spawning in the bottom. We've got Gabony, my former co-caster <laughs> until a couple of minutes ago. And his opponent up top, Blackmore Crest. All right, we're going to see Badger versus Wolf here. Um, and... Overall, this map looks okay for both players. I mean, gabe has got access to a few bases down south. And meanwhile, up top, you know, Blackmore's got this nice pocket base. He's got a decent natural expansion up front, too. Uh, so I don't really give a ton of map favor to either player in this situation. Um, it's kind of weird. Like, in the early to mid game, I'd say maybe it goes to Blackmore Crest because he's got this high ground. But I feel like it should be easier for gabe and he to eventually get to four bases if we ever get there. And both players opening up with kind of a safety build, um, which it, it, it it's good against early aggression, but like five farm Warren versus eight farm, uh, the eight farm is going to be in a better spot. So uh, you know, definitely use this kind of opening with a grain of salt. I feel like the five to six farm openings are best on really small maps with short rush distances, just as like a tip for new players. Um, and wait a second, we might be able to get Gabe any back in. Uh, yo, can you hear me? Oh, right when I joined it, he left. <laughs> uh, anyways, let's take a look at what's going on in this game. Uh, so yeah, nothing, 
really has happened at this moment. Uh, we're still just kind of building up in this early game, almost at the two-minute mark. Both players just building up some squirrels for the moment, pretty standard stuff, and we'll have to see if anybody looks like Blackmore. Okay. Hey, there he is. Oh, thank God. Um, so I'm, ca I'm casting your game against Blackmore Crest right now. Uh, yeah, I, I've been following this game, so I'm not looking for it. So, yeah, so Gamity at this point is is just chilling. He's saving up a little bit of money. Let's see what the choice is. Meanwhile, Blackmore Crest taking that pocket expansion up top, adding some toads into the mix. And, uh, yeah, I mean, no really, really big decisions have been made yet. Just, uh, you know, a few tier one. You know, Blackmore snagging that expansion. And, uh, you know, likewise, uh, Gabity here, just building up some tier one. Looks like you're trying to move out on the map a little bit. I just want to point out that my technical difficulties were probably common folk propaganda. Oh, this yeah. This sabotage. Did he, did he get hacked? Hacked by, did he get DDoSed by the common folk? Indeed. So you just built a bunch of moles, and now you're going to try to move in to Blackmore Crest base. Okay, I'm going to try and get there, because I'm a bit behind over here. Yeah, I'm at three minutes in. Um, okay. All right, Gaming is coming in with a big push, and I don't think Blackmore Crest really smelled it out until until now. Snipped it out, I should say. Smelled it out sounded weird. Uh, <laughs> but Gaming comes in, gets some damage done, uh, knocks out a couple of Warrens, and this push is not doing too bad. Building some more moles up front. You know, this is a nice little timing. Blackmore is trying to get up to some tier two, trying to take a second base, and. And Gabity just really committed to tier one here to, to more and more moles. And, uh, oh yeah, overall successful attack, but it might be overextending at the very end, and, and then you back out. So, so far it looks pretty good for you, man. Mm-hmm. I just want to say that when I was talking to Blackmore earlier, we were talking about another replay <laughs> that we were supposed to send. Dude, he, he sent this one <laughs> in, like, today at, like, 5 o'clock. Uh, I wonder if he sent in the wrong one because I think he names them like you know so and so versus so and so. If you have time, or if you if you know if we still have time, then I have the thing stay saved so I can just hit that hit you with that. That one's crazy. All right, so looks like you're trying to take an expansion, but Blackboard Crest is pretty far ahead in economy now. Granted, uh, Gabe and he got in there and and dealt some pretty significant damage. Um, but we're kind of stabilizing. I feel like Blackmore is in a bit of a lead. You're getting them chameleons out, though, them sneaky lizard boys. St lizard sneaky boys. green boys, I guess I should say. Well, chameleons are lizards, right? They're, I think? Yeah. Or are they a different category altogether? Nah, oh. cha chameleons are definitely lizards. Like, in tooth and tail, they're, they're different things, but in, like, the is natural it? kingdom. I'm pretty oh, sure. Yeah. They might be something different. They're like reptile, but I don't know if they classify as lizards. I mean, they gotta be in like the lizard family, wouldn't you think? I mean, look at it. It's well, like, yeah, definitely. But... It's like it's like a lizard. Like, lizards <laughs> like, like a, a lizard. It's like a blanket term, man. There's a lot of different species of lizards, you know. True. Um, nice couple turrets there on the high ground. I don't mind that. Trying to get up to some chameleons here. Nobody really comfortable enough to to throw down tier three. Uh, which I don't blame you guys and but Blackmore Crest has got an economic lead. He took some damage earlier though, so I'm not sure how much that evens things out at the moment. If you look at the army graph, you guys are pretty close though for the moment. Alright, so we are five minutes forty seconds in. Those main bases are starting to mine out. But second bases are established, and it's really just kind of waiting to see who's going to pull the trigger first. It looks like Blackmore Crest is going to wait on a few more Tier 2 units before moving out, perhaps. Uh, nice scouting here from Blackmore, just keeping constant tabs on what Gabeny's up to. I'm not, like, he hasn't seen any Tier 2 from Gabeny yet, so he might might be a pretty good assumption to, to assume it's Chameleons, since he's seen the Warrens, right, but hasn't seen any units. I think all reptiles are lizards. Toad Stew says premium. Uh, dude, chameleons, chameleons gotta be lizards. I'm gonna Google it. Are you kidding me? Come on, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my reputation on that. Chameleon. Oh, oh, Wikipedia here. Are a distinctive and highly specialized clade of old world li lizards with 202 species. Boom. They are totally a lizard. Uh, so there you go. 
So says the mighty Wikipedia. So both players building up to some big armies at the moment. And in Blackbird Crest, looks like he's taken that army value lead uh, just because he had that nice economic advantage after getting that second base earlier. And look at all this tier two from Gabany, though, man. Rocking up to a lot of Falcons, lots of chameleons here. Lies, I made that up. Dude, literally, what are you talking about? You have Google too, man. Type in chameleons Wikipedia, and it's in the first sentence that chameleons are lizards, okay? You don't need to take my word for it. All right, Blackmore Crest is moving out. Let's see if gabe has got enough. Delph, you're not in the call. Oh, I thought you were just being quiet because, like, I don't know, because it's your game or something. How am I not in the call? Dude, this is turning into a train wreck, man. How did that happen? You're making me sad. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm in here. Yeah, now you're back. Welcome back. I don't know how I just, like, randomly dropped out of the call. <laughs> that was weird. I'm glad there's... I think it was an outage brief it, briefly, and that's why I, uh... Not like I had power outage or anything, but like... Oh, uh, yeah, just on just Discord outage. side? Yeah. Yeah. Now I want you to... I want to point out that this is all common folk propaganda. That loss never happened. It was actually... Oh, fit. yeah, that's true. Yeah, the common folk just beat the crap out of you, huh? Oh, hold on a second. That's not how we word things here. That sounds like sin. Here, here on the feast. That, that was glorious. The feast. Mm hmm Common folk propaganda. Dingo dancing. Loyal soldier of the KSR will yeah. redeem me. Let's keep it moving, man. I don't think I better do any extras tonight because it's already almost 10 o'clock. Oh, my bad. My headphones came unplugged. I can't hear anything. One second. <laughs> There we go. Okay. Yeah, the the show's already running long, man. Um, so let's awesome. let's go into match number ten. Are you ready? I am. Let's do it. Three, two, one, go. Okay, spawning Ooh. on the upper right, we've got Nomine. And spawning on the bottom left, we have Dingo Dancing. I was Once about again, to do glorious KSR. I was about to do Dingo Dancing, then I remembered you want to introduce the KSR players. Of course. See, I'm thinking I'm about you, man. I must. This is my job. Look at this. Very similar decks here. Uh, pigeon versus Lizard, Badger versus Wolf. And both those make sense. You know, like, Pigeons obviously synergize really well with the Badger. And uh, Dingo doesn't really have a reason to have Pigeons in his deck. And Squizzard's a really good combo. So. Yeah. Dingo's running the Wolf, however, so... It's, it's kind of one of those things where it's Wolf bad, uh, versus Badger, so... It can go either way. Yeah, I, I don't think either. I don't. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. Like, I don't think there's a hard counter or an easy answer there. Um, but with with the map so small like this and rush distance is so short, I'm not sure if we're even going to see this get into tier three, man. If I was Dingo Dancing, I would get up a little Squizzard army, uh, maybe throw in some skunks and try to push out. But we'll have to mm -hmm. see what these guys want to do. Like, I don't think Nomine could really rush for a tier three with this position i mean it it it's especially not especially now with the road in between the two bases there the rush distance is so much smaller because of that yeah that's a good point like, the lizards i i want to say he could run in there with the lizards and you know get a farm or something but not with the warrens up by now yeah lizards aren't actually like a fantastic in their early early game like uh, if, if the lizards tried to push in, the squirrels are, are phenomenal at defending against them. And even on a, aggression, like if you're attack, you'd be like six squirrels attacking like into a six lizard guy. Yeah. That the, the six squirrel player is probably actually favored uh, with some good target firing. Yeah. Um, so lizards are kind of best to like, you know, tr trickle in a little bit later on. But this is fine from Dingo, like, opening up with the Lizards because he's not trying to do anything crazy just yet with him, right? Like, I'd imagine, yeah, see, look, he's going to throw down a Squirrel Warren. He's probably going to throw down a couple more and then move out when he's got the Skunks. So both players are building up to something really similar here, but I think I like Dingo's position better. I mean, he doesn't really need this turret at the moment, uh, so he might sell that I think off. It's just a safety precaution as of right now. 
Yeah, I think he might have been worried about maybe a big like squirrel mole push out. Um, yeah. I do want to. I do want to point out that I favor Dingo a lot, not just because of the fact that he's playing KSR, but because of the fact that he has lizards, and the lizards are very good at just assassinating tier two. Yeah. Yep. It, that. So it, you can dive your lizards into the enemy army and kill those skunks. And example. not only that, but they also offer a lot of flavor. Like Squizzard is just better than straight squirrel. You know, like eighteen squirrels right. versus nine squirrel, nine lizards. Uh, the Squizzard player is favored, but Squizzard's also harder to control. Like it's really easy to run in there, and then you're, like your lizards kind of fight by themselves and all die before the squirrels get there. You know, so you got to be careful yeah. about that. Okay, the turret gets sold I don't know off. I can do what I do, which is just build 97 lizards and hope for the best. Oh my god, 97 lizards. Sounds I like a great idea. 100. I knew, I knew you almost had an anxiety attack that one game where they just wouldn't build the 100th lizard. Yeah, so, I, I think I that was Meowkaiser, man. I think so. Oh my god, here this we go. Is gonna get yeah, that's going to get wrecked really he's quickly. So much food. He's just throwing it into MGs. I like those from from Dingo, but I think that was a smart play from from Naminé here to just uh, you know take that grist mill and back out, not not overextend into the defender's advantage. Number thirty three overextension leads to loss of limb. That's right. Now, the wolf is coming out here for Dingo. So oh, but Naminé looks like he got the scout off. Yeah, that's a very good scout for him. Uh, so he can kind of pivot his strategy based on seeing that that wolf on the way. If he builds the Badger, then I have a feeling he's going to have a very poor time. And he's going to have a very poor time. Yeah. The thing is, is that the Wolf is coming out now. While that Badger is building, there's a giant window for Dingo to buff his Falcon Warrens and to buff up his Skunks and his Falcons. Right. That's so much time and flexibility that he has. Yeah, keep in mind, Namade's had this campfire, uh, these, this campfire lead for a little bit here, but I agree 100%. Like, if Dingo moves out with this wolf and hits this timing before the Badger's ready, uh, he's going to have a very superior army. I mean, maybe the move to make in that kind of position was just kind of gear up, you know, build a whole bunch of more squirrels and, and try to get in there before the wolf's out. Right, yeah. But if Dingo doesn't move out and Namade actually gets the Badger... Like, we could be in a good spot, but Naminé's moving out a bit earlier than he should. He's not waiting for the Badger, but at, at the same time, the buffs are spread over to those Lizards, which, while it's not bad, I feel like it would have been better used on the Falcons. Yeah. Although this fight is still going into Dingo's favor. Yeah, Dingo just kind of creams Naminé there. He's going to push his advantage and knock out more and more of the Tier 2. Push the advantage forward and uh, start getting some damage on these this infrastructure here. Nice sell off from Naminé trying to try and see. He the... hasn't got. They don't know about the Badger yet. Although those Falcons move a bit more forward, I'm pretty sure that they will find the Badger and they'll probably destroy it. No, they're pulling back. Yeah, it's really nice war emplacement there. And, the, you know, keep in mind, Naminé's got these few campfires that are giving him a pretty significant income lead, especially after uh, we hit the five-minute mark a minute ago and all those mi all those farms start mining out. Okay, the Badger's on the field, but did Naminé take too much damage already is the question. I think he actually did. I don't know if he can come back from that. He does have a ton of pigeons, however, there's just so many things that can kill the Badger. Lizards, Falcons, all of the above. All of them can bring a Badger a world of hurt. So if I was Dingo right now, I'd be going and selling the Squirrel Warrens just to get more Lizards. Because the Lizards are better at killing the Badger. Yeah, everything's down though. Badger's got no support and Dingo's just going to come in, knock everything out. Look at this, like barely, you know, the skin of his teeth here. Like he's starving out as he's pushing in for this final uh, attack. But it's enough to win the game and Dingo Danson takes the match. All right, it's 10 o'clock, but we got two more to muscle through, man. Are you going to stick around with me, Gabony? No, I'm out here. I'm not just kidding. That's All right, all. see you later, bro. All right, man. Batch number 11, are you ready? I am. Let's get let's get to it, man. Three, two, one, go. Okay, spawning in the bottom, we've got Amistria. And spawning in the top, we have Dazit. Man, Dazit is such a dirty player. Not only is he the stinky KSR, but... He's also got three defensive structures, man. You know, I there's this phrase I have. It's called peace over morality. Dude, 
There's nothing peaceful about mines, okay? You know, it may be immoral. However, one must remember that to uphold order and peace, sometimes desperate measures, wrong measures, are you. Man, I, I've been doing that a lot recently. I've like been getting way too in character when it comes to KSR, and I'm like, I'm going to give a heroic freaking KSR speech right now, and you can't <laughs> stop me. I do it too much. It's like the KSR Discord is just full of that. I love it. I, I like a, a Mishra has been taking this barbed wire lately. I mean, lizards have been really popular in the meta. I think it's a pretty cool answer to it. Um, but it is a little map dependent, you know. Like, barbed wire gets yeah. the most value when you can just place down, like, one or two pieces and, uh, and, and kind of just block off a, a complete choke or something. Unless you're like me and you like seeing giant walls of barbed wire with drum fires behind them. Man, we used to see that more back in the day, like around when the game launched. I don't know if it was just because players were new or just experimenting with things more, but dude, there was a ton of replays in like early Tooth and Tail TV shows where you would see like whole maps that are just like split in half with barbed wire and artillery cannons and stuff. We used to call it like the World War One style, you know, where it's just this total oh, dude. Now that you say that, I, I have a replay for you next week. It's, I'm warning you now, it's 20 minutes long, so have fun. <laughs> Almost 4 a.m. in Germany. Dude, you European viewers are soldiers, man. I've got a lot of European fans that, like, uh, watch the VODs and stuff, but there's a lot of Europeans that are in the chat pretty often, too. And I'm just like, dude, it's like... They probably sleep during the day just to be here. Yeah, like, I, I'm like, dude, all right, man, it's 10 o'clock. Like, it's getting late for me. <laughs> <laughs> really? I, I have insomnia, so I can't sleep at night, but still. Yeah, I, I'm the same way, man. If I'm left to my own accords, like, I'll stay up all night. But there's this thing called, like, jobs where you got to report to places and make money as this adult human being. So I, I don't know. What, what's, what's, what's earning money? Yeah. Please tell me. It's really cool for, like, five minutes until you pay all your bills and then you're broke again. Oh, right. So what I'm hearing is you have this thing that lets you get cool stuff and then you don't anymore. Yeah. Okay. I, I, get, I get the power. I don't get cool stuff. I get the power to obtain cool stuff for like five minutes and then I gotta be <laughs> responsible and like, oh, here's 90% of my paycheck right to the bills, you know? <laughs> oh, maybe I'll buy oh, a new man. $10 Steam game. Like, that's my... You ever seen that meme of the YouTube video with the kid in it? It's like, we need communism. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that meme just because the kid's face is hilarious. I've been watching uh, Parks and Recreation with my wife lately. Dude, Ron Swanson is just such a funny character. He's like, this is so typical, like, libertarian capitalism guy. And he's like, <laughs> capitalism is right. a system where it shows you where there's rich people and stupid people. <laughs> uh, but anyways, guys, uh, Dazit's getting a really fast second base, but so is Amistria. And um, the Wolf is on the way, though. So Amistria's kind of, I like this move a lot, actually. She's, it's kind of almost like a bluff, you know, where Amistria's like, hey, you know, I'm out in the field, like, I'm ready to take an engagement, you know? But in the meantime, right. she's really just trying to buy time to get this wolf out. Though she is floating a lot of food, and she's going to rectify that now, I think, but still. Yeah, I think she's trying to save up for the wolf. Oh, yeah, and barely, barely blocks it. it it's it's really this, like, fine dance, um, you know, when you're saving up for that tier 3, because it's like, you don't want to overfloat when you could have, like, built other things, like... Obviously, the goal is always, like, right when that Tier 3 gets done, having exactly 180 food, you know? <laughs> Capitalism is evil, says Marxist Leninist Hopperism in the chat. No way, not with a name like that. I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love that guy, man. Shout out, shout out to Marxist Linus Hopper, Hopper is a man, long time. Uh, I'm sorry, you mean a filthy common folk terrorist? Dude, how dare you? It, it's, it's revolution how anything is done, man. Have you ever heard of the American Revolution? Okay. Yeah, I have. For good old America? You know, there's a reason why America is called the armpit of the world. Is, is it, though? No. <laughs> 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 Alright, so Dazit's move. This is actually really cool from Dazit. Just taking this campfire, stretching out on the map a little further, building a couple turrets. And uh, Amisha's got to be careful, man. If if she kind of lets Dazit keep stretching out, 
He's gonna draw these battle lines where all five of these Grismills are on his side of the map. If he's drum fire up, he'll be in a very good position because you know drum fire is just very solid. And I think he's going for that now. Once that mill's done, I hope so. Or not. That's six hundred plus off the game. That's insane. What, dude? You can't get six hundred points. Shh, dingo. Shh, dingo. You didn't hear it. I'm so confused. I, I like I love talking to the chat. I just love that. I really wish I could actually stream, but I can see that later. Nice attack here from Amistria, but she loses the wolf, and... But the Falcons at the same time... Actually, no, Dazit's gonna be able to clean this up. Yeah, Dazit holds very well. I think that would have been okay for Amistria, like she was trading, but losing that wolf there uh, was a very big blow. Uh, nice defense and from Dazit. Dazit just has such a strong economy right now. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's really important too. Like, even if Amishira took a better trade there, it, it still might not have been enough as, as Daz is just powerhousing behind us. Exactly. If I was him, I would add some more squirrels into the mix right now, however, as those Falcons don't really have a body blocker. Yeah, mishira has got to be careful. Those lizards ran in a little bit early, but the rest of this army is doing all right. But Daz has got enough here. Those Falcons staying alive in the air at very low HP gonna clean everything up and Daz is starting to get to this like critical mass of Falcons where the DPS from his army is just so huge. No he can't get through there. Oh no. Daz it does back out for the time being though and, and yeah the big issue here for Amisha is the economy but she's got her own third base going. Um right. However Daz it has access to the entire map. Yeah. She doesn't. She has access to these three bases and that one campfire back there, which does she even know about where that is? I think she does. No. She actually doesn't know about that campfire. She hasn't scouted the entire bottom half of the map, I don't think. Yeah, both players really haven't had the opportunity to, to give that bottom half of the map a, a real scout. It's probably going to be rough for Amishiris because she might assume, like, there's so much room down there. You know, there might be another right. grist mill, but unfortunately for her, there isn't. And yeah, Dazit's in a fantastic position this game. I think he did really well, uh, really muscling for map position earlier on. And, it, and it's paying off for him in dividends at the moment, as like you said, like he's got five Grismals to his name. Nice yeah. position here for Amishri on the high ground. Is it gonna be enough against all these Falcons though? I think it actually is because with the split attack and the focus fire, yeah, those squirrels, like, like I think the big, wow, Misha cleaned that up, and she really should know. That was very impressive, but it was more oh, of a... Jump is up. But I think so she'll have enough is... to, to take it out, right? Oh, but it doesn't do AoE, so yeah, probably. But the, the big the big story with that fight was that Dazit's Falcons were far enough forward where the majority of Amishu's army were targeting them. Like, if Dazit would have just kind of pulled his Falcons back, like, a tile or two... And let those scroll, right. uh, let his scrolls on the low ground, you know, tank the hits. Like Daza would have cleaned that up very well, but that was great for Amisha. Yeah, look at that army graph, man. Like she won such a favorable engagement there that might put her back into this game. Daz has kind of got the limbing effect going on, man, where his units are kind of trickling in one by one as Amisha is kind of gaining this critical mass. As her attack. Yeah, she, he needs to kind of pull back and just let the army build back up. Maybe sell one of those MGs over there. Yeah, but Dazit really just doesn't want to give this base up. I, I I think it was a mistake. Like, he had to have just decided, okay, I'm not going to get this. But he, he wanted to believe in the heart of the cards, man. Like, he just he was like, you yeah. know what, dude? I'm going to save this base. And just the trickle effect from Dazit here, you know, just wasn't enough. And I think Amishri has got enough momentum from here. I think so too. Really impressive Ooh. comeback, man. I thought for him, says no weed. Because <laughs> I said heart of the cards. Dude, yeah. <laughs> I've never watched. I've never watched or played Yu-Gi-Oh, but I have uh, played a ton of Magic the Gathering, and I'm proud of that because Magic the Gathering is a real man's game. <laughs> Dude, nothing's more fun than going into like a card shop. Like I'm like a metal dude, who, like you know, I'll just like go in a card shop, be like, get lightning bolted, nerd. Dude, it's so much fun, dude. Oh my god. I've actually never done one of those. I should probably get to it one of these days. Magic is really cool, but it's like super expensive. I mean, right. it's hard to keep up with. Like, hey, if you want to build a standard deck, like, 
get ready to drop like three, four hundred bucks. <laughs> so I'm just gonna point out that that's more common for propaganda. Never happened. <laughs> I think it's been pretty back and forth tonight between between factions, right? Like we've seen yeah, some I, KSR wins, really we've seen, seen some common folk wins. Yeah, that's true. I, I, this this is acceptable, barely. All right, guys, last match of the night, game number twelve. Are you ready, Gavini? I am. Let's get into it. Three, two, one, go. All right, spawning on the right, he is Duhu. And spawning on the left, Yars. Wolf Boar. Okay, that's a combo I haven't seen yet. Like, we've been seeing guys in the past week or two really experimenting with double tier three, and it's been working phenomenally. Like, if you just got to be really smart about your other uh, deck picks, you know, because it just right. takes up so much room, you know. Um, but I, uh, I think I've actually seen Wolf Boar before, and it works well. You essentially are taking the boar's agile that it has, the slower version, and just giving it the speed of a badger. Yeah. Which is really dumb because it's it's a flying boar, basically. It, it might just kind of be coincidental here from Doohoo's part. Like, I think maybe he's going for Wolf Falcon, you know what I mean? And he just kind of has the boar as well to deal with tier one. I don't, I, or maybe it is like he wants to wolf buff up the boar. I'm not so sure. Like, I think Wolf Badger has been really strong lately. Wolf Owl has been really strong lately. Um, but I, I Wolf I, Fox, sadly, because Fox is just really weak as of right now. I, However, I do think, I, I hope that something changes to give... Wait, hold on a second. What is this first Warren Skunk coming from? Oh, Yaris, Yaris is being super greedy here. I, I'm wondering if Doohoo's going to punish him for it. No, instead... Oh, oh my man! <laughs> oh, man. what a great way to end the night here so uh, that's a really cool response you know like you kind of have two options you know what that makes a lot of sense here from do because y y really what my gut instinct is if i see my opponent doing something greedy like a fast tier two is to build some tier one go wreck his face right but look how big right. and awkward this map is like you're never going to get over there in time unless you have well no not really even with lizards so Doohoo's just like, you know what? You're going to be greedy and go for a straight tier two. I'm going to, you know, see your greed and raise and hit that tier three. Nice little uh, pocket kind of sneaky base for Yaris up top. Uh, it might be hard for Doohoo to ever find that base. If he hasn't already scouted it. No, he, ha he hasn't even gone to that side of the map. Hey. I think that's another issue I have is like, Instead of focusing on scouting my enemy, I focus on like scouting the map constantly. That's an issue. Yeah, there's like there's a window. Um, one of these days, I gotta take you under my wing, man, and play some scrims yeah. with you or something. But uh, I agree with you. But there's like there's a window of opportunity. Like the first couple scouts, you're gonna want to come in uh, and see what your opponent's doing, just to verify that they're going for eight farm. But it's a pretty yeah. safe assumption after that, like you know, that they're going to throw down two tier one Warrens. So around that time is a good time to get the lay of the land and, and get your survey on, you know, see what, see what's out there. And then you want to come back and really see what they do after those first couple tier one Warrens, you know? Right. But in this yeah, case, that might not have been a good assumption because Yaris went tier two first and, and Doohoo went tier three, right? But that's totally not something you see very often. And, and speaking of Doohoo's tier three, man, he's got the boar out. And Yaris let's... is getting the fox, however. Ooh. Fox is pretty so... good against boar. Mm-hmm. And it's obvious who I'm rooting for. But I'm worried, man. If Doohoo keeps his march up and is going to move out now, like, I feel like he's sending mixed messages a little bit, kind of like throwing down those turrets at, and building an expansion. He's kind of all around. Like, maybe he doesn't want to all in with this, but at the same time, it's a nice shoulder check. Get in here and be like, hey, if you can't deal with this, I'll just win. If not, I've got a second base that I've got well defended. Right. Look at that range on that flamethrower. Oh. Damn. All right, coming in. Moving the boar up front to tank all the hits. It did get the HP nerf, but 100 HP is still pretty ridiculous. But the fox is here. Look at that chunk of damage. Yeah. That thing's dead. He's going to dupe that boar back. 
Oh my god, is Yaris gonna hold this? He can't lose that fox. Absolutely gotta keep it alive. The boar bomb goes off, but doesn't do a whole lot. And Yaris holds. He takes a couple hits, but he kills the tier 3. Now he's got the fox, and now Yaris is in pretty good shape. He did lose a couple farms, however, he does have the base fully functioning at the top, so... Yeah! He's doing very well in terms of economy. I didn't realize he actually put, like, five farms up there. It's pretty good. Yeah, he's very ahead in economy right now. If I was him, I'd just go for a contain. Well, no, he doesn't have defensive structures, so I guess he really can. Man, all Yaris needs is, is some, some ferrets here to break these turrets. But maybe he thinks he can just kind of powerhouse his way uh, through these defenses without him. I mean, Duchu sold the boar, so... It makes sense. And then with these squirrels going across the water, that's especially dangerous because they're going slowly through skunk gas. Yeah, and, and through the fox just, you know, sniping them on the back end of it. Exactly. Yaris is just trying to straight up break this without any ferrets, and I think it's slowly starting to work. I wouldn't be surprised if the skunk gas starts to spread up towards the pigs, and the fox is just gonna make Duchu's life miserable. Yeah, now this is probably too much damage. Duhu doesn't have any answer for this fox, and he's just getting a ton of damage done, and he's gotta tap out. Duhu, uh, Yaris takes a match. Marxist Leonard's Hoppers in the chat says people should watch the Magic the Gathering documentary on the players. Great doc. I should, man. I, I get into, I don't know, I'm really weird. Like, I'll get into something really hardcore. So, like, if I start playing Magic again, I'll spend, like, a couple days just reading about, like, every single card in Standard. And then I'll watch a whole bunch of tournament VODs, you know what I mean? And be like, what are the meta decks and, and all that kind <laughs> of stuff. But I've been out of it for a little bit. I'm really excited for MTG Arena. Uh, that should be really good. New online version of the game coming out that's going to replace Magic Gathering Online. But anyways, guys, I think that's going to be it for the show. Um, it was a lot of fun, man. Uh, we're going to be back pretty shortly, though, because we got the big tail PvP campaign on Saturday and Sunday. Yep. I'm pretty excited for that. That's going to be I'm actually really excited for that. Glad lad asked, and yes. any interesting clips I missed? Dude, the whole show is interesting. What are you talking about? But game number seven uh, is you versus Swifty, so I'm sure you'd be interested to see that one. Uh, but yeah, man, Sunday it's going to be me and you, Kasson. Saturday it's going to be me and Jed Erickson. Uh, definitely tune into that, guys. 2, 2 p.m. EST. Uh, what else is going on, man? Tooth and Tail Season 2 League is underway. I think that's... What else is there? There's the Pocket World, which is kind of just like basically Pocket Bot, but still... Yeah, Pocket oh, World just kind of like friendly rivalry on top of the ranked play. PS4 yeah, crossplay yeah. came in recently, so that's really cool to see. But I don't think there's any other planned events. I know Strawberry's been talking about uh, getting an old Strawberry tournament going again. Huh. Your, your I'd list. like to get a tournament going. I just have nothing to offer. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we, we get all kinds of people that, that do organize, organization, man. I'd like to see another Banner Bastion tournament, man. I got to hit him up. It's been a little while. <laughs> I think it was the festive face-off around like December was Banner, Banner Bastion's last tournament. Oh yeah, I think I remember that. I remember watching it at least because there was something of it. Marxist says, cool, it's called Enter the Battlefield, Life on the Magic Gathering Crow Tour. Dude, awesome. Sometimes I have to do really boring work at my job and I just kind of zone out and become a robot and like watch, listen to something slash watch it. So I might, uh, I might turn that on. But, all right, guys, that's it for me. You got anything, Gabney? No, I don't think so. Right on. Well, I will be back live, what is it, Thursday? So you guys aren't going to miss me for very long, man. Saturday, 2 p.m. EST, we're going to kick off a big best of three tournament uh, organized by Jet Erickson, and it's going to be a ton of fun, man. And then on Sunday, we're going to – the top four players are going to qualify for the PvP campaign event side of that on Sunday – Lots of guys have been putting in a lot of work for that. Gabe and he wrote the story. Master Wario did the maps. Glorious AFB did the artwork. We had E-Illuminatus working on the coding and making sure it works on, on Mac and Linux and that sort of thing. Uh, who else is involved? Is that is that basically the core team there? Yeah, pretty much. Also, real quick, I just need to say uh, with my boys in the chat, glory to the KSR. How dare you. 
I even salted you on the end stream. You know, I, I've always forgiven Premium Bo for being KSR because it kind of makes sense because he's a mod, you know? Mm -hmm. It's a very, like, mod, but, mod faction. True. Where's my moderator status? What is this madness? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. You might be too, might be too biased. I don't know. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, Mr. America versus EU. Let's only talk about America. <laughs> we talked about EU. I mean, we talk, yeah. we, we talk smack about EU. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, the next, next one. Uh, uh, Lucky Lusario asks KSR. Uh, KSR is the, the green faction. Oh, no, he says I'm here. Maybe he knows. No, he he's one of my he's, he's one, one of my men. He's, he's one, one of my your followers. Oh yeah. He's one of my he's one of my soldiers, one of the loyalists. But all right guys, that's it for me. Uh I'm gonna give the host over to my wife. She's playing old school JRPGs, so let's go say hi to her guys, and I will see y'all Saturday at two PM EST. Take care everybody. Oof.